Hey, my friends, good morning. Take a look at the watch. 10.50 a.m. Monday, April 10. We're here in New York City. Specifically, we are in Marble Hill, which has a funny story. If you look at Google Maps, you would probably think I'm in the Bronx, and physically we are attached to the Bronx, but Marble Hill is part of Manhattan Island. You go on Wikipedia, you can read all about the history, it's kind of interesting. It used to be physically attached to Manhattan, something, something, something involving changing the waterways and shipping and all this stuff. Eventually it became sort of an island and then they filled in the land on the other side. <laughs> so here we are in Marble Hill, marking the boundary point of the Bronx in Manhattan. And today we're gonna walk Broadway. ABX, Mars and Worldwide, Diana Lee, it's good to see you. For reasons that will become obvious in a little while, I have my uh, battery plugged in, so no microphone, so please do me a favor in the chat. It shouldn't be too, too windy today, but if we get a bunch of comments about the wind, if you guys can help us, I'll let them know. We're plugged in today, not using the mic, such is life. ABX, my name, I went to high school there. Well, we're gonna kind of cut through it today because today the plan is to walk Broadway. I'm hoping we'll make it the whole way. So that would be 14 miles. We've done it before. Uh, I checked my YouTube videos. We did it two years ago, almost to the day. We did it about two years and two weeks ago. I think it was like March 13. Something like that. I have a Mars and seized right through us. Thought we'd be walking the length of Broadway. Yep. Just give it a couple minutes for people to join. I'm just kind of getting my uh, getting my legs ready, getting ready mentally. <laughs> so it should be about 14 miles. It should be about four and a half hours, assuming I don't take any breaks. We'll see as we go. It's been a while since I've done a really long walk, so not as consistent these days, but fingers crossed. Yep. Softball game going over here. Lost the ball. Uh, that's very kind of you, Marzen, but the, the joy of some of these walks is it's like when I went into the uh, botanic garden the other day, so ticket for one, but really I'm bringing 100 people along with me. Part of the fun. All right, well, let's go kick things off. Let's look at the plaque. Let's see if I can find it on the ground over here. So here it is. This is the boundary point. On one side in the Bronx, one side in Manhattan. Oh, almost got hit by softball. That would, that would really kick things off to a good, uh, <laughs> that would really kick things off, huh? Right, here we go. So as we go, I guess a couple thoughts. Um, Diana is saying actually it would be good with the wind. Yeah, it would actually be better with the wind. It would be better if it was colder. And there's like no clouds today, so it's super sunny. So I'm actually, my biggest concern, aside from just that I've not been walking as consistently, I think I'll be okay physically. Um, my bigger concern is that the phone's gonna overheat. So. It is entirely possible we'll lose the stream at some point, in which case, you know, we'll take a little phone break until it comes back and restart. I'm really hoping it's cold enough that it doesn't happen even with the sun, but I'm not super optimistic about that. So we're in Marble Hill. This is 230th Street. So we've got to go 230 blocks <laughs> to get to Houston. And then we have to rock from Houston to the southern end of uh, Manhattan. So it's gonna be a little bit. Should be about four and a half hours if we don't take any breaks. We do have a couple bottles of water. I'm fueled today by uh, 
Dunkin' Donuts from this morning. <laughs> yeah, minimal stretching, so. Let's see how this goes. Could be a fun one. Here we go, 230th Street and Broadway. ACL, welcome. Yeah, if you guys want to hit uh, exclamation point weather, it should say it in the chat. It's, uh, I think it's in like the mid 50s right now. It's gonna go up to 65. So 65 and sunny is the high today, which we should experience somewhere along the way. You can see the one train to our left running elevated over here. We're gonna see a lot of that as we walk including in uh, Harlow, Morningside Heights. It's gonna be an interesting day. What I'm really excited about as I came over here though, was I've been seeing tons of cherry blossoms. So I'm kind of pumped to see some of the cherry blossoms in interesting places. and says, you got this toughest part walking Broadway is the first three miles, that's where Manhattan's the highest. Absolutely, yeah, it's the, the hardest part. So I've actually walked every street in Manhattan. I've done this walk before. But indeed, the hardest walks in all of Manhattan are in Upper Manhattan. That's where there's the most significant hills. I think like two and a half miles in uh, exactly is kind of where it's going to be the roughest. But then it's, as they say, all downhill from there. There's some really cool sites for, uh, in Marble Hill, by the way. I, I wish I wish I had more time I, to show you guys stuff, but there's some cool stuff like these stairs. We're going to see some stairs that are going to remind you of the Joker stairs. The Joker stairs are in, uh, actually in the Bronx. But you're, we're going to see some that look like them. But there's tons of really cool old houses in Marble Hill. Check, check out my old videos if you want to see more from Marble Hill. The videos aren't that good, but <laughs> if you just want, uh, if you just want to see the neighborhood, at least. You know. Oh, and Manny Explorers has uh, visited Marble Hill before, so check out his videos on the area. But yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Gregory Kelly, Brenda Free, Steve Gonzalez. So guys, strap in. Uh, got about four and a half hours ahead of us, assuming everything goes to plan. Let's have fun today. Ian, thanks for checking in. We are coming up to 225th Street. We started at the Marble Hill Playground, which has the beautiful plaque separating the boundary point of the Bronx and Manhattan Island. Again, encourage you to read about Marble, Marble Hill, the history of it. It's really fun. Still warming up, so not quite at my pace just yet. Ooh, I better turn the watch on, huh? That would be done. Yeah, today should be really fun. Steve says this is Brooklyn, right? Nope, we are in Manhattan. Yeah. We are in a neighborhood called Marble Hill. And today we're gonna walk the length of Broadway, 14 miles. If anybody's gonna stick around for a bit and in the chat wants to answer that question, I don't wanna be overly repetitive to folks who join throughout because many more people are going to join later than joining now. Here is 225, and we're going to cross the Broadway Bridge, bringing us into the physical, the current physical Manhattan Island.
cars and says halfway point is approximately 90th Street. Isn't that funny? That when we get to 90, which seems like there's still going to be a long ways to go. This is, we're, uh, as we cross over, we're going to enter the neighborhood of Inwood, Inwood Hill Park over there. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful day, folks. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining. start to see all some a lot of sites that I saw when I did my big Manhattan walk this is 9th Avenue over here there's stretches of 9th and 10th Avenue that are kind of disconnected from the rest of 9th and 10th Avenue they just kind of exist up here in uh, Inwood and what's funny about 9th Avenue over here is it kind of curves Manhattan is a fascinating fascinating island once you escape the grid and even the parts, you know, you hear 9th Avenue and things should be part of the grid, uh, aren't always super, super interesting if you look at the map. Steve says it wouldn't be New York without all the sirens. Exactly. There's a hospital right here. And then of course, like I was saying before, we have the one train running frequently above us. Bear in the garden, good to see you. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining. Obviously don't expect many people to be here the entire four and a half hours, but your support and encouragement along the way is greatly appreciated. So up here, uh, there's a lot of Columbia University stuff. They do sports up here and you can see Columbia doctors. So I guess they also work with the uh, medical system up here. Broadway 220, Broadway 220. All right, only 220 more blocks to go, plus everything south of Houston. <laughs> Ian asking how the, uh, how was Easter? And then I saw earlier, Brenda asking, how was the, uh, the cheesecake? The cheesecake was fantastic. So Eileen's special cheesecake and Olita highly, highly recommend it. Since you didn't hear, what I did was they, they sell these like little individual tiny ones and I got a whole bunch of them. And so I've had cherry so far and key lime and both were excellent. And I, I'm using my wife's favorite method, which is we froze them and they obviously it's a different texture when they're frozen but they're really tasty and then you didn't ask about easter i mean it was pretty low-key but we got some very cute pictures of the kiddo he's all smiles and giggles it's a good time no one asked me are we doing the entire length well that's the plan let's hope uh mind and technology and physical body <laughs> hold up 14 miles Should we, uh, rush across the street keep our pace up let's do it 
Marzen asking, uh, what did we decide on today? Well, the answer was, uh, it, it's all based on my wife's schedule when she could watch the kiddo. And today was a day she's able to watch him for longer. So it was kind of, almost didn't matter what the weather was going to be. Today was the day. I mean, it was the day to do any like long, long walk. And because I did this kind of two, almost exactly two years ago, it's been on my to-do list to uh, do as a live stream. I thought it'd be really fun. Steve's gonna grab a bagel. Diana, you should check a website called Gold Belly. G-O-L-D-B-E, I think it's one L. B-E-L-Y. We're coming up to those uh, steps, by the way. So, I was mentioning how the street plan outside of the grid is super complicated. So this becomes, this splits, and we're gonna stay on Broadway. That splits into 10th Avenue over there. Again, a kind of disconnected stretch north of uh, a lot of the islands. So that's in, in Inwood. Coming up to 215. 215. I feel like a train conductor. Next stop, 215. RJ, good to see you. Gregory says we must be in good shape with so much walking. Well, we're not actually walking as consistently as we used to. We take a lot of days off these days. And probably drink a little too much wine. So we'll see how today goes. I think when I did this last time, it was probably like 30 or 40 degrees, which was much easier. I don't even know that I stopped for water last time. I don't think that's going to be the case today. It's really sunny. Let's see how today goes. Ooh, Helen's going to try to stay for the entire walk. That's a commitment. All right, here are the steps. Yeah, not the Joker steps, but they kind of look like them. Isn't this fun? So I think these take you up to Park Terrace. So the, again, the topography up here in Inwood is crazy. It's all bananas. There's tons of hills. There's tons of, uh, a lot of streets. You know how there's like uh, 230th Street or 9th Avenue. A lot up here are terrace. Super hilly. And, you know, Inwood is famous. Dykeman Street is famous. Uh, those are things you might be familiar with. But the other one that's interesting is 191st Street. There's the subway tunnel street. So basically, it's so hilly up here that they built an underground tunnel, but it's so long, it's basically considered a street. It was in the news recently because it used to be covered in street art and graffiti, and they whitewashed it without consulting with the community. So it's a little controversial situation right now. Coming up to Ishim Park, really beautiful. Oh, look at the flowers. Super pretty. Gregory says, how close are we to the cloister? So, um, basically, so the cloisters is the uh, medieval art. So the neighbors came with the kids. What's the best word? Outpost of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's in Fort Tryon Park. Just, uh, I think it's southwest of us. <laughs> I usually think of that as like at the very top of the island, but uh, I think uh, Isham Park and Inwood Hill Park are farther north. So from our current perspective, and today's probably a good day to have Google Maps up. <laughs> 
I think from our current perspective, it's actually south of us, which is so funny. <laughs> All right, so over the next, uh, so we're just about coming up to our first mile. And at 2.5 miles is when it gets the most hilly, where I will be totally out of breath. Coming to the end of Isham Park, and I love it up here. So we're in Inwood until Dykeman Street, after which we'll be in kind of Fort George. And Washington Heights for a while, <laughs> then Harlem, then uh, Morningside Heights, Upper West Side. There's a ways to go, folks. So we're going to go through whole neighborhoods. Come up to Isham Street and with a really poignant other street name, Inwood's Heroes of 9-11 Way. Wow. A lot of streets have secondary names like that. I'm sure you've seen before. Like 6th Avenue is Avenue of the Americas. See, nobody coming. We gotta keep making our way. Nobody's coming. Inwood's Heroes of 9-11 Way. Wow. Um, all right. The Capuchin Franciscans of Good Shepherd. The building has a sign saying 1936 on the cornerstone. hardest walk I did early on was St. Nicholas Avenue and as part of that walk I attached uh, I think it's called like Fort George Avenue which from start to finish is like the highest incline in New York City and I was just like dying on that hill like it was so hard for whatever reason just earlier days for me so everything was harder and it was like the windiest day you could imagine. So if you watch my St. Nicholas video on YouTube, when I get to the top of the hill, you hear this ridiculous wind. It was just killing me. Like it was literally stopping me in my tracks. Just about to pass 207, 207 folks. Nobody coming. No cars. Ian's asking, are we walking every block? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you guys, because I think that question's going to come up a lot. I'm going to ask you guys to start answering that question <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> I don't want it to be too repetitive. I'm going to try to focus more on kind of where we are in the moment. I've mentioned before, there's a podcast called the Bowery Boys Podcast. So if you're interested in New York City history, highly recommend listening to them. They have an episode basically called like the story of Broadway. And they interviewed the author. I'm going to forget the name of the book. I'm going to forget the name of the author. But they interviewed a guy who wrote a book literally all on Broadway. And the idea was that you could tell the entire story of New York City with that one street. And I think the subtitle is something like the story of New York City in 13 miles. So obviously he focuses on uh, you know, Manhattan Island, I think, I guess, exclusive of Marble Hill. Because we're doing plus Marble Hill for 14 miles. Check out the home up here. This is the Dykeman House, 1783. Grad 2023, welcome. We're gonna see a lot of cool stuff along the way, but we're not really gonna to stop too much. If I can go the whole way without stopping, that would be ideal for me. That's a historic farmhouse, by the way. A historic farmhouse. From the 
1700s. So much history here. Annalise says hydration. Yeah, it's really sunny today, so I did bring a couple bottles of water. We may stop for water. But I'm hoping. I don't drink a lot during my walks, but it's too sunny today, so we probably will have to. Hawthorne Garden. Oh, I love entryways like this. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Hawthorne Garden. Again, still in Inwood up until Dykeman Street. It's coming up. But yeah, the history of uh, Broadway goes back. I mean, it's always funny talking about history because you don't want to say like to the revolutionary days because that you know ignores all the history that came before them, the native history. Broadway is kind of a good case in point for that. It was originally a native trail. So basically the history of Broadway goes all the way back. I mean, it just goes all the way back. Eventually developed by the Dutch. And they had a different name for it. I forget the name of the tribe. I think it started with a W. The Dutch gave it, I think they originally called it the name of the tribe. And then I think they called it like Gentleman's Way. Couldn't tell you why they called it Gentleman's Way. Eventually, when the British took over, no cars, no cars. Academy Street. Oh, this is reminding me of all my walks here in Inwood. Uh, they called it Broadway, given how wide the street was. So literally broad way. But if you look at it on Google Maps, you're going to see it's not in a straight line. There's all sorts of twists and turns. You're going to see offshoots. So we saw one offshoot earlier, 10th Avenue. In a while, there's another offshoot, uh, St. Nicholas, I was just talking about, and others as we go farther south. Basically goes from the west side of the island, almost to the east side, but at that point, the island shrinks. And it's just kind of running down this, the middle of it. Coming street. giggle at this coming street Seaman Avenue <laughs> oh, I'm a child Dykeman Street next maybe X says those are great apartments very roomy for the price and not five thousand dollars a month either hey now you're talking the we actually have some friends who live around here uh, the tricky part is one of them often works in uh, like the Chelsea area. And so he has to take like an hour long train ride. And it's all within Manhattan, right? It's all Manhattan, it's, but it's, it's so far north. There's Broad Dyke Apartments, another beautiful entryway into the Garden Plaza. Here's Dykeman Street. Dykeman, by the way, they've done a lot of cool open street stuff, meaning uh, where they pedestrianize the street. So a lot of the restaurants have tables and chairs in the street. It's really fun for the neighborhood. Dana Lee sets gems around every corner. Exactly. Exactly. So here's another interesting part. I was mentioning, you know, all the twists and turns and funny stuff about the island. So we're right here, we're going Broadway. This is part of Riverside Drive. It's another disconnected stretch these days of Riverside Drive. Riverside is like, when I was doing my Manhattan walk, Riverside was so confusing because there's all the, it got redeveloped over the years. So like this, there's this like one tiny stretch up here. Mr. and Mrs. O, good to see you. Yeah, she was looking at some, uh, you were looking at some of my uh, Inwood videos. Here we are, we're in Inwood right now. Crossing Riverside Drive. We are now out of Inwood. 
This is Ann Loftus Playground. New York City Parks, by the way. If you ever need a restroom, they're actually fairly reliable about having public restrooms that are accessible. A lot of stores make you buy something or won't even let you, even if you buy something. Mr. and Mrs. O says, I grew up in Edwood, so much has changed. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful neighborhood. There's a lot of retail, there's a lot of restaurants. It feels to me very diverse, like a variety of uh, different communities live here. Arden Street. And Gregory was asking about the cloisters, so we are only now coming up to Fort Tryon Park. So you'd have to go up, 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 up to get to the cloisters. Fort Tryon, one of the most beautiful parks in all of New York City. If you've never been, highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. It does, it's uh, hilly as you can see. Everything up here, very hilly. So you might need your hiking shoes, but if you can manage it, it's a whole lot of fun. It's really beautiful. I will say in winter, it can be a little tricky with the ice. But other than that, it's beautiful. I got the uh, kiddos out for a field trip up ahead, getting their exercise. Many explorers welcome. Manny, we're walking Broadway. Dong in place. So if we were to go to my right as I'm walking south, which uh, is west, again, basically all uphill, all uphill. So a lot of the streets over there are much higher than where I'm standing right now. Check this out, it's got the, that form is the construction. Ooh, the sun is really coming down. That's my big worry today, that it's gonna overheat the phone. Fingers firmly crossed. And I should have worn sunblock. <laughs> That's right. So again, the cloisters, the uh, medieval art outpost of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Absolutely beautiful. If you've never been, highly recommend it. Though you probably want to go on their website, figure out tickets and transportation. There's buses, there's subways, but it's pretty far from where most people are. Uh, like if you're visiting New York City. So you just want to plan ahead. So again, another interesting curvature over here. About to intersect with Sherman Avenue. And all the beautiful old architecture. Up here, you know, you're seeing a lot of the buildings that you know, don't get knocked down and redeveloped. Many of them have serious, beautiful character. And uh, as we make our way south, you know, what I'm thinking of is the movie uh, In the Heights. So if you want to see more from this neighborhood, that's like one movie you could go watch. Still walking along Fort Tryon Park. It's absolutely massive. You can see kind of the stone wall. Really beautiful. Really pretty. And it says, the sign said this is a uh, 
uh, bird habitats. So dogs are supposed to be leashed at all times. Yeah, if you were to take the subway, I think it's the A and the 1. But if you guys have Google Maps up, it'll give you more information. I'm just thinking of the times I've taken the subway up today. I took the Bronx uh, BXM1 bus, which really flies, but uh, it's, it's like 675 instead of 275 because it's an express bus. One ninety six. Next stop, one ninety six. Marzen says, if we make it, can I try to get us a ticket to uh, the Great Saunter? I appreciate you. Let's see how my legs do today. Again, I haven't been as consistent with my walking. Fourteen is a pretty long walk, and the Great Saunters. 32. <laughs> Let's see how I do today. Let's see how I do today. I can't believe they do that in May. Too hot. I wanted to do this in uh, February or March. Just the timing. We just didn't have a day with enough time to do it till now. A lot of, there is a fair amount of construction going on up here, so I guess they are building some new stuff. Nagel, Bennett Avenues. This is what Manhattan Island kind of looks like. And it's why we have all the skyscrapers and stuff. What do they call it? Manhattan Schist, I guess? So the reason we have all the super tall buildings, why they develop here of all places, is that we have this massively tough rock. And up north, you can see a lot of it protruding out of the ground. I, there's one spot I'm just blinking. But there's places where you can find like a, huge rocks just out of the ground off some off some streets up here. I, I'll have to look it up later. So yeah, coming up to 191st Street where you can take the uh, formerly graffiti covered Subway Street Tunnel. I have a video of it from a couple years ago, if you want to see what it used to look like. Marzen says, I hear you. Yeah, when Gabe did the Great Saunter on his own, I think he did it when it was like 30 or 40 degrees. That's the way to do it. And he started when it was still dark out. <laughs> and it says, at least we're getting our vitamin D today, yeah. I think I might be overdosing on vitamin D today. If you want to look up some apartments up here, renthudson192.com they have studio and one and two bedrooms and even here they describe them as luxury which is to me the most obnoxious keyword in real estate 
all all that means is there may be like two running machines somewhere in the building like two treadmills and maybe your refrigerator is stainless steel it doesn't actually mean luxury but it does mean they'll add an extra thousand bucks a month to your rent The famous park in the South Bronx has the rocks as part of the scenery kids climb. And yeah, a lot of them are pretty sheer face though, so it'd be it would, you'd have to be a real pro to climb some of them. But when I was a kid, I would have definitely have been the one to try. Fairview Avenue up next. I remember walking Fairview Avenue. That was another really hilly and interesting one. And my favorite memory from Fairview is look at these buildings. You can see the stilts that they're sitting on. And I have to tell you, if I lived there, seeing those stilts, I would find very disturbing. <laughs> I'm sure it's safe, but it's a funny sight. Right over here, this is the uh, station I was telling you about. So you can enter there for the 191st Street subway station. Take that really interesting graffiti covered tunnel. Although I guess it was uh, whitewashed recently. But again, go into my archives, my older YouTube videos, if you want to see what it used to look like. Hi, uh, Ian heading out. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully we're going for a while, so we may see you again. I may need to go to the, across the street, actually, because the sun is just going right down on me. I really don't want the phone to overheat. I may have to cross the street. It looks a little shadier over there. There it is. Wikwazgeek. I probably cannot pronounce that for the life of me, but that is the, uh, I think that's the name. That, uh, of the tribe that originated the Broadway Trail. So it started as a trail before becoming kind of the main thoroughfare. Yeah, we're gonna wait here for a light. We're gonna cross the street. I need more shade. Ooh, and I'm feeling those hills. There it is. We're feeling it. ABX says the wall will be redone. New York City looking for art. Yeah, they got, there was a huge outcry. And then they said, oh, you know, that's what we were meaning to do all along. But, you know, that they only said that after the outcry. So I, you know, what can you say? It felt as I read things, it felt like it was something being done to the community as, as opposed to something being done with or by the community. Yeah, we, we forgot our suntan lotion, our sombrero. <laughs> Whoops. Colleen, welcome. Everybody who just joined, welcome. Good to have you. Oh, this is 187. One of these streets over here was super tall having all these sense memories of walking these streets. Oh yeah, look how tall this is. I remember walking up this and feeling it in my hamstrings.
brutal. Mighty Bull, good to see you. We saw the uh, charging bowl late last night. And if everything goes according to plan, we'll see him again today, but not for a long while. S48. He said the school was built in Here's another crazy tall street. All the cars are parked San Francisco style. <laughs> 185. All right, let's take a look at the map. Okay, let me zoom out for a second. So we started here. West 230th Street, the Marble Hill Playground is right there, which has the uh, boundary point between Bronx and Manhattan. We came across the Broadway Bridge and we've been walking Broadway. So again, Broadway kind of curves at first. Let's see. And we're, we're right here. And it's going to continue curving this way now. Next. Oh. Let's finish this hill. Mighty Bull says, what was the name of the video? Last night was uh, Easter Sunday night. It's at the very, very, very end of the video. It says GWB, George Washington Bridge coming up. Yeah, it's on my to-do list. Supposedly they redid the uh, walking and bike path. And it's supposed to be a lot nicer. So on my list to... Uh, I've never actually walked across the bridge. I've been over there a million times to see the... Uh, one of my favorite sites in New York City, the Little Red Lighthouse. But I've never walked the bridge. One day, one day. I have to do what you did. I have to do the uh, Great Bridges walk one day. But I think I'm, in terms of priorities, I want to do the saunter first. I really want to do the saunter. I've done the whole perimeter of the island, but never in one day. I think I did it over two days. that sunset yeah but speaking of we got some feedback that the quality of the video kind of suffered towards the end so I actually reposted uh, using the, the backup copy that I get which was much higher quality so if you if you really like that sunset check out the uh, the re reposted video I put up it's much clearer now and uh, let me know if the connection goes all wonky again like that. I'm trying something different today. So hopefully we won't have the same problem, but let me know. 
Washington Heights Pediatrics coming up to 181 and the GWB. If Gregory is still on, you can see the sign right there. Make a right for Fort Tryon Park in the Cloisters. You'd go to Fort Washington and take that north now. So now we're going the other way. <laughs> When you walk the whole island, your perspective shifts considerably. If you're used to thinking things, you know, as Times Square being the center of Manhattan, we're very far from that. Say, Parker, good to see you. Robojacks, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Mighty Bull, thank you for sharing. Appreciate you. See some of the old banks up here. Oh, I really love old architecture. Beautiful apartment buildings up here. 1-800-A Street, Broadway. It's good to have everybody. Thanks for walking with us today. Happy to have the company and the support. GW, GWB Mercado coming up next. Some shops underneath. starting to smell the food of Washington Heights, which I have to tell you, making me hungry. Uh, here's our weather report. It's sunny and 60, going up to 66 at 5 p.m. Well, I hope I'm done before 5 p.m. There it is, the GWB, George Washington Bridge. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a long one ahead of us today. It's a red light, folks. It's a red light. Run in the red. Run in the red. Run in the red. What a jerk. Did that right in front of a bunch of people crossing the street who don't have the benefit of a two-ton car and airbags. Not cool. All right, passing the GWB, as well as the GWB bus station and the Mercado, the market. It says the beginning of the Great Bridges Walk. So the Great Bridges Walk, if you don't know, it's a 32 mile marathon walk across all the bridges into and out of Manhattan as one continuous walk. And Marzen recently did it, so huge shout out to Marzen for that. It's a tremendous accomplishment. And he put together a really cool video about it if you wanna, if you wanna get a taste of it. <laughs> Hard as that is to believe. So as we come around here, 
uh, if the name Audubon is familiar to you, you probably know it in reference to birds, the Audubon Society. Uh, they're, I forget what it's like, the headquarters or something is up around here somewhere. I think it's like on, maybe it's in the 150s, 160s. I forget exactly, but they did it. And they did an art project called the Audubon Murals Project. And so some of the storefronts around here have beautiful murals of birds. And so I'm keeping my eyes peeled. If I see any of them, I'll try to show you guys some. Supposedly there's like over a hundred, but I've only ever seen a handful myself. They're not all on Broadway, but I think a fair number of them are, are on Broadway. There's a map on the Audubon website. Coming up to the uh, United Palace Theater, one of the most beautiful buildings in New York City. There's some pictures of the inside over here. Look at this, how stunning is this? Uh, Mighty Bull wants uh, Grant's Tomb. So we're, we're not going to go to Riverside today because we're trying to walk all of Broadway. But we actually did go to Grant's Tomb on a live stream like a month ago. If you look at my uh, past live streams for the west side, we did go to uh, Grant's Tomb not too long ago. It's really beautiful. Isn't that theater incredible? Absolutely, it's one of the most beautiful buildings in all of New York City. Let me get one more view from this direction. Again, the United Palace Theater. There's a, it's just beautiful. If you look up old, if you Google the United Palace Theater pictures, you can see lots of vintage pictures of it. It's, it's just like, it's incredible. Yeah, Mighty Bull, I apologize. We have 14 miles in total today. So, unfortunately, not going to take too many detours if I can help. There's another offshoot avenue over here, Wadsworth. And I, I have to start paying a little bit of attention because I think St. Nicholas is an offshoot at some point. And uh, when you're walking, I think St. Nicholas actually looks like the logical way to go. I need to make a right, not a left. Similar things ha happens around Times Square where you can mix up Broadway and 7th Avenue because they cross. And then again at uh, Madison Square Park, Broadway and 5th Avenue cross. <laughs> it's a very funny city. Broadway does not abide by the grid. We got the TV interview going on, channel 47. Telemundo. Cornet Pizza, famous near, probably most people know it from uh, Columbia University. They make these absolutely gigantic slices of pizza. I don't think I knew there was one up here at 172nd Street. Ooh, look at this mural. Look at this. Ah, uh, Steve asking a very pertinent question. Bagel recommendations. So 
So my wife always says I have to say this one because it's the one we have the most often. We've been ordering from a place called Bagel Bob's. That's just, they're kind of near us. So we order a whole bunch and just keep them on hand. So those are the ones we have all the time. But my recommendations are, if you just, if you're coming to New York and you have to have one bagel, and you only get one, I would go to a place called Essa Bagel. ESS-A-Bagel. There's a few of them around the city. And I think for most people, it's like, it's affordable. And it's just like a classic New York City bagel. Totally classic. And I would, you know, I would get like, uh, whichever bagel you prefer, I'd get cream cheese. Just keep it simple. And that's like the classic New York City bagel. And then let's see. The second one I like to recommend is Russ and Daughters down on House Sit. We saw it on a stream not too long ago. But Russ and Daughters is a classic New York City deli, old school. It feels old school. And what I recommend there is if you're gonna have a party or a picnic, that's where I would go. And you can get bagels, you can get all sorts of uh, sweets. And if you eat things like smoked fish, uh, that's a good place to pick that stuff up. All right, I think this is where I wanna be on this side of the street. We'll go back to the shady side in a little bit. So Russ and Daughters for like a party, for a picnic. And then if you wanna go a little ritzy, if you're willing to spend a little more money, in Soho, there's a restaurant called Sadel's, S-A-D-E-L-L-E apostrophe S. If you know the restaurant Carbone or Parm, it's the same people. I think their group is called Major Food Group. And it's their version of a Jewish deli. It's expensive. The bagels are small, but they're all fresh made. And you, what you do is you order a whole bunch and they have these like, I think they literally call them towers. You order like the smoked fish tower. And you order a whole bunch of bagels. And they come out and stack on a pole, just like they would have in the old days. And they really are good. So it's not just like a gimmick. They actually are, it lives up to the gimmick. <laughs> but it's expensive. So if you, that, that's kind of, you want to go all out having a deli day. And then the one I get the most questions about that I don't like is H&H. &H. Super famous, lots of people go. My wife and I have tried it multiple times based on people's recommendations of it, and every time we don't like it. So that's the only one off the top of my head I would skip. Yeah, we're coming up to the hospital now. Good afternoon, God bless. 168th Street. And this street is also known as Healthcare Heroes Way. So 168 Healthcare Heroes Way. Shout out to all our medical workers. Cars coming. So this is uh, Presbyterian. At 168th Street. There's the subways, one AC and one. Marzen's vote is Broadway Bagel at 101st Street. Yeah, Steve, for most people, I would say Essa Bagel is a good choice. It's really good. They're kind of funny, too, because they're like the size of a baseball. <laughs> I would, for most people, I think Essa is like the safest bet. And usually they're so busy that you're you're almost guaranteed, you know, that it's it's turning over quickly and fresh. Marzen likes Broadway bagel. We do uh, bagel bogs a lot, and uh, there's this another thing called Tal T A L that my wife and I do a fair amount. So, that, you know, there's lots of choices. I want to cross over so that we can, I want to show you guys this building. Because again, we're going to start to see some really cool buildings. I 
I also want to be on the shady side of the street. Uh, the lights change. So um, while I'm stuck here, I want to show you guys this. This is the Broadway Mall. So Broadway is similar to Park Avenue. A lot of it has these malls. It's such a wide avenue. And a lot of them have seats like up here. And if you're up here, oh, that was annoying. Uh, if you're up here, I would go somewhere, grab a smoothie or something, and then you can just sit on one of these beautiful flowers. It's really fun. Chris MG, wonderful vlogger from Granada. We've talked about bagels a couple of times. When people ask, I try to, I try to abide. Here's another example of the rock coming out of the ground. What's the name of this park? I wait for the light to change. Mitchell Square with one L. Beautiful little park. But check out this building. Absolutely stunning. So Chris, since you joined, we're trying to do a big walk today. We're going to try to do all of Broadway. We're, let's see, 170... We're 65 uh, blocks in already, so we're three miles in. Look at this building, isn't this beautiful? ABX says it's landmarked historic. What, what what did it used to be? It looks like it used to be a theater or something. Can you let me know if you know what it used to be? Back in the day? kind of mixed use now. Oh, it's smelling pizza. It's this place. Broadway Slice. Broadway Slice. That smells good. Classic New York City restaurant, Taco Bell. <laughs> Subway. All the classics up here. All the authentic New York City restaurants. Oh, here's 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 an Audubon mural. We found one. We found an Audubon mural. I'm so glad we found one. So again, the Audubon Society has, I guess, its headquarters up here. I think. And they partner with the community and, and local artists to do tons of murals of birds in the neighborhood. And you can see AudubonMuralProject.org if you want to read more about it. They have a whole map. How beautiful. Uh, ABX, that sounds that does sound familiar. That does sound familiar. Marzen says Mitchell Square, named after New York City's youngest mayor. Prince Ice is here from South Korea. Nice, welcome. We're recreating our Broadway walk today, live this time. Which I guess does remind me, if you don't want to hear me rambling on, I have another video of Broadway, which I did uh, as a no talking. So pick your poison. Ooh, there's another Audubon mural across the street. There's so many of them, and sometimes they're on different sides of the building, so unless you have the map handy, I'm just kind of running into them as I spot them. Look at this. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Prince Ice doesn't know why the live notice didn't pop up. Yeah, YouTube notifications are notoriously unreliable. Basically, what I think I've learned is they, they have like an internal limit of the number of times they'll notify somebody in a given day and basically the algorithm is deciding all day long like is am i going to use 
part of that limit now, or do I think something better is going to come later? Because <laughs> it wants to save some of it, you know, most of the New York City walkers, you know, start walking around like 5 p.m. or something. And it's like, whoa, it's really early. Do I want to waste a notification on, on this guy, on Sean? <laughs> yeah, I hope everybody wants to get here and makes it. You know, I always try to focus on free. Oh, here's another mural. God, there's so much beautiful stuff over here. You know, I, I think you guys know I try to focus on you know, free or, or fairly accessible activities in New York City. So, like walking Broadway, you know, if you're capable of walking any part of Broadway, you don't have to do the whole thing. You know, you get to see different neighborhoods, you get to see different people, you get to smell different restaurants, you get to hear different music. Uh, the art is different. You know, literally the graffiti is different. <laughs> the houses are different. The apartment buildings are different. It's all free. But of course, you still have to get here. I can't help with that. <laughs> That's the lesson I'll be talking about. Robojack's very kind. Robojack says, notification never wasted on you. <laughs> too kind, too kind. El Palacio Seafood. Little Caesars coming up next. Get a $5 hot and ready uh, pizza pie. Oh, there's a guy playing trumpet, practicing, I guess. I'm telling you, the music over here. Live music. 160, so we started at 2.30, so we've made it 70 blocks, 7-0. We're feeling good, folks, we're feeling good. So 160 more streets plus everything south of Houston still to go. <laughs> I was telling a story on one of the live streams, maybe last night actually, uh, that when I first did this walk a couple of years ago, for some reason, and I couldn't tell you why, I had it in my head that it was 12 miles, it's 14 miles. So I was looking at my watch periodically, I was like, oh, I only got this much more to go. I mean, I know the streets, so I kind of had in my mind, like I should have known how much longer I actually had to go. And then eventually my brain was like, hey buddy, <laughs> the uh, number of miles and what you know is still to go is uh, not lining up. <laughs> That was a little disheartening. Man, precise. 2,000. Korean wine. Great sunny day. Hey, precise. thanks for being with us. Thanks for supporting us. Thank you for your encouragement. And thank you for your super chat. Appreciate you. I have eaten at that I Pizza New York over there. I picked up some pizza from there and went all the way west to the waterfront. And there's some beautiful, there's some really beautiful places to sit over at the waterfront. Oh, look, the cherry blossoms. Oh, the city looks so pretty right now. Spring is here in New York City. Yeah, do us a favor, leave a like, tell a friend. Today's one of those days where your encouragement will help keep me pushing, so thank you for that. Uh, if we were to go west, by the way, that does take us, uh, Mighty Bull is mentioning, Riverside Drive, and there's some really pretty parts of Riverside over there. On my uh, never-ending to-do list will be a Riverside Drive walk, so not today, but one day we will uh, we'll explore some of the really interesting parts of Riverside Drive. I 
I know I say that stuff all the time, but there actually is a to-do list and it actually is never ending. <laughs> to our right. Uh, I think it's a school now, but it used to be the American Geographical Society. What's the school? I forget what it's called. Boricua College. Used to be the American Geographical Society, really beautiful buildings. Oh, and we're coming up uh, Trinity uh, Cemetery. So Trinity Church down at the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. Hopefully we'll get there. They have a cemetery up here, a really historic cemetery. This is 155th Street. And as we cross 155, I'll tell you guys a story about 155th Street. But let me show you this really quick, because this, this is an Audubon mural. That's how you do it. That is how you do it. That's an Audubon mural right there. So let me tell you a story about 155th Street. So I've told you guys, I've walked every street in Manhattan. Some streets are more complicated than others. And 155th Street, I think, is the most complicated street in New York City. What do I mean? On this side, the western end of 155th Street, it splits like this. It becomes two. And then when you go the other way, east, it splits like this. One on top of the other. There's actually two levels of, there's two 155th Streets over there, one on top of the other. There's a viaduct that runs atop it. It's one of the weirdest streets in New York City. And if you look at Google Maps, you have to zoom in before it'll show you. Because, like, what do you do when there's, like, street on top of street? It's super weird. But there's literally stairs to get from one part of 155 to the other part. New York City is fascinating. It is a fascinating city. Oh, four more likes to 100. Thank you, guys. Yeah, isn't that a beautiful mural? So I've only ever walked by this cemetery. One day I'll have to do a tour here. I'm sure it's interesting. There's a handful of cemeteries in Manhattan. Obviously, land here is so valuable. You know, it's kind of unusual to see a cemetery in, in Manhattan Island. But there are a handful. There's a couple in the East Village. And there's some smaller ones downtown. They're generally very small and attached to a church. This, I think, is the largest one. But I'll tell you, my favorite street of all, when I did the walk, was 138th. It has a similar thing where there's an upper level and a lower level. The lower level is funny. I call it the Looney Tunes block. It's super weird. It's like half a block long. It ends in a brick wall. That's why I call it the Looney Tunes block. But it has sidewalk. It has street signs. I don't know why it has those things because it's, it's like not a street. <laughs> and there's no reason for it to have like a sidewalk and street signs. But it has those things, so I counted it and I walked it. <laughs> but it ends in a wall. <laughs> We're now in a neighborhood, a kind of sub-neighborhood called Hamilton Heights. So this is the area where you'd find the Grange, which is uh, Alexander Hamilton's residence. You can actually, it's a museum now. You can go in it. It's operated by the National Park Service and City College of New York, which, if you've heard me talk about City College before, is the most beautiful campus, certainly in New York City, but one of the most beautiful in the United States. Here's another mural. Beautiful. Again, if, you, if you're liking the, the bird murals, the project is called the Audubon Mural Project. They have a map online, 
and some of the storefronts have the murals, some of the side streets. I, it's impossible for me to find them all, but just as I see them, I'm trying to show them to you guys. One five one, one five one. So we're just about coming up to uh, eighty blocks. At one fifty, that'll be eighty blocks. Every twenty blocks or so is the kind of rule of thumb for measuring a mile. So at this next block, we'll be about four miles in, which means ten more to go. Ten point one more to go. <laughs> 10 miles to go. Here, New York City fact, many credit New York's Empire State nickname to, oh, I think it was, uh, what did it say? I didn't look quickly enough. Did anybody see? <laughs> Somebody finish the fact. Ooh, there's another um, bird across the street. Oh, it's beautiful up here. Hamilton Heights, Washington Heights. Okay. Ooh, little Debbie. Some beautiful buildings. I love the old fire escapes. Brian Davis, welcome. Good to see you. Look, classic New York City slice, Domino's Pizza. Spread love, do the right thing. Love that, love that. Uh, oh, here's another mural. Here's another one. Ooh, we just passed 100 likes. Thank you guys, appreciate your support. Oh, there's so many murals over here. Spread love, do the right thing. It's a bar, it looks like they say they're fans of first responders. A lot of incredible art up here. I'm trying to pay attention to the, uh, I'm trying to look for more art. Plaza Dominicana. You can see over to my right, the street goes down over here, so again, it's super hilly in this area, but that brings you to the uh, Hudson River. Beautiful day, beautiful sights, beautiful people. We're feeling good, folks. neighborhood that we should come to is Morningside Heights. So Washington Heights, Hamilton Heights, Morningside Heights. Uh, no, Harlem, Harlem. Cars just sitting there, that's blinkers on. Harlem and then Morningside Heights. Insight says, Baskin Robbins and Dunkin' Owns Safe Space. Amusing. Yeah, they're actually, um, they're owned by the same company. So a lot of them now, um, what they did was they took the existing Dunkin' Donuts and put like a little ice cream uh, section in, you know, in a, one of the corners. Because a lot of the Dunkins, they used to make donuts in-house. They don't do that anymore. They get trucked in. If you ever wondered why they don't taste as good as they used to, it's because they don't make them on the premises for the most part. There's a handful that do. So in New York City, there's like some uh, kosher Dunkin' Donuts where I think they do make them in-house. But for the most part, they don't anymore. 
and so they used some of the space you know they kind of rejiggered their locations and put in those baskin robins bighorn asking how many steps are we getting so 14 miles 14.1 miles and for us it's about 2,000 steps per mile so we should get 28,000 steps today plus some so we should be getting I mean inclusive of any other walking I do today it'll be a 30,000 step day 145th Street you can get the uh, one train up here says we're doing marathon training. <laughs> well this would be training for the saunter if I can if my legs could manage it. That's my next uh, sort of bucket list walk. That's the entire perimeter of Manhattan Island is one walk. I've only ever done it across two days. So it would be doing it in one day. It's literally more than twice as long as this walk. 32 miles compared to 14. And it would take an entire day, so I really have no idea when my wife and I would have the time for that. But one day, one day. being with us. Appreciate all of the well wishes and support. It's fun to hang out with you guys. Children's stories of NYC. Eloise at the Plaza. Eloise is the story of a precocious six-year-old girl who lives in the Plaza Hotel in New York City. Hashtag International Children's Book Day. Those, those uh, machines, by the way, they, uh, they have free Wi-Fi. You can make calls on them. They have a they have ports where you can uh, charge your phone, and they tell the time, they tell facts, they tell the weather. They're called Link NYC, and they're they're kind of planted throughout the city. So if you, if, if, you know, your phone dies, you can actually make calls on them, or you can plug your phone in to charge it at one of those. It's kind of how they replaced uh, pay phones. Robodex says, we'd love to see you do the saunter live. So the thing is, the official saunter is in May, and they sold out of tickets, and I didn't get one because I didn't. I just didn't have the foresight to register. But I really think Gabe did it the right way, which is he did it in winter on his own. I don't know that I would want to do 32 miles in summer. <laughs> and I'm at, it's 60 degrees today and I'm worried that the phone's gonna overheat from the sun. That's, that's the biggest concern RoboJacks around doing it. Um, live. So 
so I, I had also been thinking of, you know, sometimes I'll strap a action camera on my backpack. So I thought maybe, you know, that would be another way. But obviously if I did it live, many, many, many more people would watch, so who knows? We'll see, we'll see. stands. Local market. Green pepper, 89 cents. Ooh, I missed us passing 140, so that was uh, 90 blocks. We walked 90 blocks at 130. 130 will mark the 100 block point. Romantic Depot. Yeah, right. Marzen did it one week before Gabe in the snow. Hey, that would have been brutal. Some of the, there are some spots where if it got icy, you know, and you're walking so far and your legs are like barely hanging in there. <laughs> Monte Fiore Square, this is beautiful. Look at this, the art over there. Beautiful. There's so many parts of New York City that you might not see every day. So to give you a sense of scale, so New York City, uh, just the island of New York City, since we're doing Broadway and I've, I've told you guys it kind of curves and does various things, the island itself is like 12 miles long, like north to south. Broadway, because it curves and stuff, within the physical island is like 13 miles. And then with Marble Hill, which we did, it's 14 miles. And what is the island? Like two and a half miles wide at its widest point, which is around 14th Street. It doesn't seem very big, but um, in terms of blocks uh, and streets, if you add all of them up, every block of every street in Manhattan, it's something like 600 miles. And when I did my Manhattan walk, so I did every block, you know, you, you duplicate a lot of things. You go around corners and, you know, you're gonna do that again when you walk the avenue. So it ended up being about 1,200 miles for me, according to my watch. And so when I said I did 2,000 steps to a mile, it meant it was over 2 million steps. So, you know, when I see something, I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. And it sounds like I'm seeing it for the first time. It's because there's a whole lot of city to see. There's <laughs> a whole lot of city to see. Look at the size of this apartment building over here. Massive. Totally massive. Alright, we're getting to the point where I'm just like standing in the shade as opposed to standing in the sun. I says, today's walk is like exploring the unknown. I said at the very beginning, if, you, uh, if you're interested in New York City history, there's a podcast called The Bowery Boys, and they have an episode on Broadway. So if this walk inspires you, you can, I'll, and I'll add some links to it later on, 
assuming I am successful. Uh, I'll add a link to the podcast. But the reason this is my favorite block is, so it's 14 miles. It takes, if you don't stop, it takes about four and a half hours. So if you do make stops, you know, five hours, six hours, like I feel like a lot of people, if they have, you know, if they're in pretty good shape can do that. If you can set aside a day, you could do it on a Saturday, you could do it on a Sunday. And it tells the story of the entire history of New York City. I mean, literally, it tells the whole story of New York City. It passes through almost every neighborhood. And then you see stuff like this. You see the one train coming. You see all this cool infrastructure of the city. You see all the different architectural styles. You see residential. You see business. You see the theater district. You see the garden district. You see everything. It's awesome. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful. University has a few buildings over here and then if you walk a couple blocks west uh, it'll take you to the waterfront over here there's something called the West Harlem Piers it's also where dinosaur barbecue is and if you've ever seen the movie spider-man the viaduct over there you'll know from spider-man and that's another example where there's an upper level and a lower level. The city over in uh, Upper Manhattan. It's kind of funny to call this Upper Manhattan since we've already walked 100 blocks, but whatever. Uh, upper Manhattan is fascinating. It's really fascinating because of all the hills and all that jazz. Speaking of, Columbia University Department of Public Safety. gas station. You don't see a gas station all the time in Manhattan. Regular gas, $3.95 per gallon. $3.95. Oh, I should mention, so we're on Broadway, but right over there is another street that's called Old Broadway. So again, this these used to be you know, native trails. And again, we've already seen it a few times how the how Broadway kind of curves in different ways. So there's an old Broadway just to our left. Again, if you want to see some of the streets that I'm mentioning, I mean, we're going to stick to Broadway and I'm walking at a pace. Uh, but if you want to see some of the streets I'm mentioning, I've walked every street in Manhattan. I filmed all of them. So just search my... Uh, if you search my older videos, you could type in Old Broadway and you could join me on that walk. And even better for some people, you don't have to hear me rambling. Marv is here, welcome, welcome. Coming up to 126 and 125, marking. We're going to cross over into. Uh, Morningside Heights next. Morningside Heights next. It's really fun seeing the train and hearing the train above us. And there's the viaduct I was mentioning over there. So if you've ever seen Spider-Man movies, you would recognize it. 
Yeah, ABX is mentioning the Columbia expansion. So th these, all these fancy glass buildings over here is all parts of Columbia University. We're um, about 10 or so blocks from the main Columbia campus. So they've expanded quite a bit over here. And Mighty Bull was mentioning um, Grant's tomb. So if you were to take this path, this is 125th Street. If you were to walk over there, there's some stairs over there. They're called the St. Clair Stairs that will bring you up to Riverside Drive and Grant's tomb. Hopefully they will let us cross the streets without knocking us over. And there's the sign for Old Broadway. There's the street sign, Old Broadway 125. It runs through some apartment buildings and I think not all of it is uh, labeled, but it shows up on Google Maps. Robin, welcome, good to see you. It's good to have everybody. If you've just joined, we've already walked 105 blocks. <laughs> We're coming up to the two hour point on what should be a four and a half hour walk all of Broadway. Mexican restaurant over there. I'm trying to remember the name. El Porton, I think. Really good. Haven't been there a long time. <laughs> Marza with the update. This is our last hill. It's all flat after this. You can probably hear me breathing. <laughs> and while it does get less uh, hilly, then it just becomes the sheer number of steps. But we're feeling good today. We're feeling good. We got a good pace. Legs are feeling okay. This is LaSalle Street. A lot of interesting streets over here. Around the corner over there is a park called Sakura Park. It has some of the best cherry blossoms in New York City. It's right next to Riverside Park, so if you walk Riverside Park, you should obviously incorporate visiting Grant's tomb and you should also visit Sakura Park. It's another train. Predicting a gorgeous sunset tonight. We had a nice one last night and we saw it from the uh, New York City Ferry. I learned from you guys we had some video issues so I, I posted the uh, I get a high quality backup which I posted last late last night so if you want to see last night's sunset from the East River with views of the Manhattan Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge and Statue of Liberty. We had a really nice boat ride last night. Mr. Ralph Rosa, good to see you. Everybody, thanks for joining our little marathon today. Up next, a few colleges, Seminary Row and Barnard and Columbia University. Union Theological Seminary and uh, the Jewish Theological Seminary coming up first. And Teachers College, lots of schools. 
most people are probably most familiar with Barnard and Columbia. Here's 122nd Street next, AKA Seminary Row. Oh, there's the Manhattan School of Music. There's all sorts of stuff up here. Ambrose prefers the Minecraft effect. So I think I figured out what happened, by the way, if anybody cares. <laughs> I was trying to, we're trying a new cell phone plan and I kind of cheaped out on it, which is my fault, my fault. That's that's all, that's on me, Jewish Theological Seminary. And what I guess I learned is most of the time it streams in HD, but now and again, and we, we do these marathon videos, it bumps it down to 480p. So I think that's what happened last night. So like two hours, you know, an hour in, hour and a half in, it went from 1080p to 480p. So we're trying a new thing today and you guys will have to tell me if it's any better. asking how are the blossoms at Sakura Park. Well, it's on my list to go over there, but I'm not going there today. We're, no, we're not making any detours today. <laughs> I don't have the energy to make detours today. That's uh, Union Theological Seminary that a lot of people are calling out. It's really beautiful, isn't it? And then on this side of the street, Teachers College. As we move forward, that'll be Barnard. Robin, we uh, we had some Dunkin' Donuts this morning. Literally the breakfast of champions. Terry Say is here. Good afternoon. Ambrose says it made it. You reminisce Commodore 64 graphics. That's that's unfortunate. <laughs> I was so confused because on my screen, Prism shows me what I'm streaming at. And the numbers on my screen were good. So it was happening somewhere, somewhere away from my phone. It was bumping it down actually, which is super weird. That's why I was so confused last night because I couldn't tell on my side that it was happening. Which is why I still need you guys to tell me if it happens again. Oh, I can see a blossom over there. I, I have a feeling that Sakura Park looks really nice, but I just, we still have 10 miles to go. So I don't, I just don't have it in me today to, to go off the beaten path as they say. But we will enjoy some of the blossoms here along the Broadway malls. Hopefully we'll get plenty of good sights that are worth your while. AC says it looks like a never-ending hill. It feels like a never-ending hill. <laughs> this one's a little more, uh, this one is milder. The earlier hills are more aggressive. They're steeper. This is not as steep. so we've done 110 blocks. So on my left, uh, again on my right is Barnard, and on my left is Columbia. Columbia University. asking which side is nicer or more quiet upper east or upper west mm, that's a good question that's a good question um, I, I because I do really long walks I tend to stick to the avenues and I think that gives people a misimpression about how noisy the city is the side streets of Manhattan are often so quiet and on the east and west side they're very similar 
Upper East Side has probably more fairly expensive townhomes. But in terms of whether they're quiet, how nice they are, they're very similar. So I tend to think it's more about like, what do you want to be near? What transportation do you want to be near? More than anything else. For a lot of people, you know, obviously what they can afford is like the number one thing. But the number two thing is probably like, where do you live and where do you work? And being near a subway line that connects those two places very conveniently. For most people, if they have, if they're able to, you know, choose, that often factors into their choice. I says, I don't know, but Broadway makes me feel like I'm walking down my hometown. Wow, that's cool. Here's 116 Broadway. This is kind of core Columbia University. You enter here for the campus. I'll point my camera in since we're here. But I, my legs are telling me, just keep going, just keep going. Columbia campus is absolutely beautiful. We've uh, walked through it a couple times. One day I'll, I'll try to do some reading on like a good walking route. And we'll spend a little more time there. Oh, look at all the blossoms on the Broadway Mall. Beautiful. Dinges, they make uh, Belgian waffles. And let me tell you right now, that smells so good. <laughs> Neville says Columbia where Peter Parker went. Yeah, we've mentioned a few uh, Spider-Man sites along the way so far. Oh, somebody was asking me, maybe it was Diana Lee, about this walk before, by the way. And I've said I've done this walk before, and somebody said, oh, maybe I should start from the... I, I did top down last time. Maybe I should do bottom up. But the reason uh, I'm doing it top down again is because the hills up here and I'd rather get those out of the way first. So if you're going to recreate this walk, I would probably recommend do what I did, start from Marble Hill. Because you want to get that plaque, you want to see that sign that says you're entering Manhattan at the Marble Hill playground. Get those hills out of the way over the first few miles. And that way you still have your most energy. Like if you've never been to Washington Heights before, you want the most mental energy where you're paying attention, you're taking it all in if you've never been there before. Versus the battery, which you've probably seen a couple of times before. So that's my su suggestion for what it's worth. Yep. Shoes on the street sign. Yeah, Ambrose agrees. Uphill at the end, not so easy. Nobody coming, nobody coming. Casey oh. says, you don't know how I don't make it without uh, stopping for the food trucks. We gotta, I'm hoping to make it the whole way. We brought some water. We may stop for water, but I'd save my calories for the end. T 
Terry watches Cash Jordan. Some of the apartments and townhomes are so expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not surprising if you see, you know, in a, in a nice neighborhood, you know, some of those townhomes can be not just a million dollars, but like 10 million, 20 million. It's really crazy. Marzen says halfway point is around 90th Street. That makes sense. That feels about right. So, about a mile to the halfway point. Makes sense. 14 miles total. There it is, 110th Street Cathedral Parkway, marking six miles. side market over here. Beautiful fruits. Ooh, some beautiful flowers. <laughs> Found the shady spot. You have to stand in the shady spots. I'm so afraid that the phone's going to overheat today. Nobody coming, nobody coming. Away we go. Oh, here's an H mark. Prince Ice, H mark. <laughs> Neville, yes. Oh, and by the way, up here, there's some beautiful apartments. I mean, I've said it a million times already. You know, we've passed so much beautiful architecture. This area over the next, I don't know, literally 60 blocks like from here to Lincoln Square, you're going to see not all the buildings, but there's going to be some really spectacular buildings along the way. The most famous, I mean, I'm, I'm probably forgetting something, but the one that immediately comes to mind is the Bell Nord, which will pass at 86th Street. That's if you watch the TV show, Only Murders in the Building, it's the Arconia in that TV show. It's called the Bell Nord in real life. So we'll pass that at 86th Street. Coming up to 108 now. Oh, and we're coming up to uh, Mama's 2, T-O-O. -O. Very popular pizza spot. Often has a line out the door. By the way, this is another point where the uh, street diverges. We're going to stay on Broadway, obviously. But over there is West End Avenue. West End Avenue. A really beautiful slash expensive street. And there's a beautiful park over here. Isn't this, uh, is it the Titanic Park? Somebody, somebody maybe can fact check me. There's a beautiful park right there. I think it's a, I think it's a memorial to the Titanic, but I might be wrong. Helen G, thanks for being with us. Helpful to have your support. Thank you. Crossing 107. Wow, all the uh, cherry blossoms is so beautiful. Oh, and Helen enjoys the TV show, Only Murders in the Building. It's a very funny TV show. It's a very funny show if you've never seen it. 
Martin Short, Steve Martin. Two of my favorite comedians. So if anybody's wondering about my pace, I've been in New York now for 19 years and I seem to have developed a pace that often, if I get it right, means I don't hit too many uh, red lights. <laughs> it's just kind of, if you walk enough, <laughs> you just kind of fall into a certain pace. This is Mama's 2, Mama's T-O-O. -O. Super popular spot you can see the line they sell amazing slices of pizza kind of their own style really 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 good and oftentimes different things are sold out so you just ask them what they recommend just get whatever they have it's really good look at those blossoms beautiful that's magnolia right I think Park dedicated to victims of the Titanic. That's what I thought. It's uh, he was was he was one of the victims, right? He perished on the Titanic. And when we've been to Little Island, so Titanic was part of the White Star Lines, and the. Uh, historic pier marker of the White Star Lines is a landmark structure right in front of Little Island. So we've actually seen that. And one night recently, I showed you guys the, the on the ground are some historic plaques commemorating the Titanic. So we've seen some. Oh, and you know, in uh, the South Street Seaport, they, there's another memorial to the Titanic. So there's even just off the top of my head, a bunch of different memorials to the Titanic around New York City. very different, all very beautiful. Dorg Rock, good to see you. Yeah, it sounds like nobody's getting a notification today, but I'm thankful for folks finding us. I think if you hit the like button, it'll signal to YouTube to keep telling others. But yeah, Dorg Rock, we're walking all of Broadway today, 14 miles. Once we, we're at 103, once we get to 90, according to Mars M, we should be at the halfway point. So we're almost at the halfway point. about our shoes. We're wearing a pair of Columbia shoes. They're kind of new. Hello. Waving. I used to wear different shoes, but they kind of let me down. So I've been trying Columbia shoes recently. They've been pretty good. So far, so good. But lots of shoes are comfortable. It's just after you walk, you know, 500 miles, it's how are they holding up? <laughs> so that's to be determined. I, I've only recently got these. Yeah, 
Ambrose says, I get notifications on one PC and not another. Yeah, YouTube is like, it's so funny. You watch enough of these streams. Oh, here's Broadway Bagel. This is what Marzen was recommending. I don't think I've been here yet. It looks good though. It looks nice. Um, yeah, if you watch enough of these streams, there's always people complaining about not getting notifications that they think they signed up for. It's very, uh, they gotta fix that. I was explaining, I don't wanna keep repeating myself. I, like an hour ago, I gave my uh, take on why I think that is, but it's a little annoying. 100, okay, so we started at 230. So we've, we are now crossing the 100 and 30 block point. We have walked over six and a half miles out of our 14.1 miles total. Manhattan Valley, that's an Indian restaurant that my wife and I really like. It's at 100th and Broadway, Manhattan Valley. If you like Indian food, I really recommend that place. Ooh, honestly, sitting down for like a warm bowl of curry and a pile of rice and a basket of naan. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty tasty. That's what happened to the movie theater. A lot of movie theaters have closed over the past few years. Tor Grok says the sounds in New York City. Yeah, the construction noise. The, uh... Oh, look at this. They must be filming for like a movie or a TV show. It's a pretty intense uh, setup. What are you guys filming? They won't answer me. I think that that's, um, I think they use a setup like that for, uh, what's that show, the James Corden show, you know? He doesn't really drive, because that would be unsafe, so I think they actually use something like that. Marzen says, welcome to my neighborhood. Right on. Ooh, look at this Batsi, progressive Indian cuisine. That sounds good. We just passed Shunli Cafe. Oh, this is also, uh, we're also in Yo Ange's neighborhood. Everybody say hi to Yo Ange. Upper West Side. Wonderful live streamer from the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Helen, they were having lunch. <laughs> it's okay. They're probably not supposed to tell. I've told you guys before, uh, when places are, when things are filming in New York City, they put up signs that's, you know, they're supposed to notify the neighborhood. But most of the time, they put code words. They don't actually say what's filming. I, and I, you know, they probably don't want, they probably don't want to make it so easy for the uh, paparazzi, you know, to know who's filming when and where. But eventually you figure it out. So, for example, NCP is the code name for and just like that. Why do I know this? Couldn't tell you, but I've learned it. So now when I see signs that say NCP is gonna be filming here, uh, I know that means and just like that is filming there. All right, stopping in the shade. There we go, 90, crossing 96. Upper west side of Manhattan. Amsterdam Avenue to our left.
Excuse me. Glad to have you. Always good to see you. Welcome. We're doing the grand tour of Broadway, the whole thing. You're at the halfway marker just about once we get to 90th Street. And they're all turning. Marv says we gotta be tempted to go into Zabar's. Zabar's. One of the classic grocery stores on the Upper West Side. If you don't know what Rugelach is, Rugelach. Look up Zabar's Rugelach. Maybe somebody in the chat can spell Rugelach <laughs> for those who are less familiar. I could probably eat a bag full of those today. So good. Pick up the uh, one, two, three train over here. Well, the best one, Neville, we'll see another really nice subway station at uh, 72nd Street with a nice park. I'll show you that when we get there. I think on this area, 72nd is the nicest subway station. I wish I can. is blocking the street. Ambrose, have you ever been to Zabar's and had the Rubelock? It is so good. It's one of the best little treats in the city. Ooh, more blossoms in the uh, mall coming up. Stay tuned, stay tuned. It's a beautiful spring day, folks. Fun day to walk Manhattan. Nice, really enjoying today's walk, eh? Happy to hear it. Joe and the Juice on my left. My wife loves Joe and the Juice. Kind of coffee. Uh, they do those juices, obviously, but they also make sandwiches. They make this tomato mozzarella avocado sandwich that's pretty good Virgil's for barbecue Carmine's Carmine's is a famous uh, family style Italian restaurant honestly going there getting a foot-long plate of garlic bread and a thing of pasta, that would be fun after 14 miles. That would be tasty. Like two pounds of pasta. Marv asked, what would be an equivalent or close to walk on the east side? There isn't really because um, the east side is just a shorter, like physically the island is shorter on the east side. So, but my uh, probably the best walk you could do on the east side is the length of Fifth Avenue. That's a pretty fun one. And again, I've walked every street in Manhattan. I filmed them all. The video quality is probably better today than it was when I started two years ago. <laughs> but. Uh, 
the best walk on the east side is probably all of Fifth Avenue. And then south of Washington Square, it becomes Thompson Street. Like you would just keep, you would, you would walk along whatever those streets become. I think Fifth Avenue would be the best. Benji's here. Brenda asking, how's our cheesecake? Oh, it was fantastic. It was fabulous. I've had cherry and key lime so far. We've still got strawberry at home. We got, I don't know if it's cheesecake or if it's mousse, but we got chocolate mousse. I, I don't know if it's chocolate mousse cheesecake or just chocolate mousse yet. I'm excited to find out. And then something else, I think. I bought way too many. I bought a ton. Amber says, must have been great, hence walking it off today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had cheesecake two nights in a row. I needed a long walk. <laughs> I got very carried away when I, it's been like at least a year since I've been to Eileen, so I got a little carried away. Can you blame me? so funny the dog walker was not having any funny business one of the dogs was getting a little too friendly with another one he said are you serious <laughs> i think he was <laughs> sir <laughs> i think he was very serious <laughs> all right coming up to 87 and 86 streets so 80 uh this marks the Bell Nord, so I was mentioning only murders in the building. This is the Bell Nord, aka the Arconia, and only murders in the building. Let me uh, let me try to get some views of the building for you guys. Yeah, we passed the halfway mark, so we've done seven miles. There's seven more to go. It's good to see everybody. Thanks for hanging out today. We're walking all of Broadway. Our own little mini marathon today. 1.08 p.m., 59 degrees, so it's definitely warming up. Oh, about to be attacked by pigeons over here. Let's get away from this. When I cross the street on the other side, I can get you a better view of the Bell Nord. Let me just cross the street over here. Bellnord is a fabulous building. It takes up block to block and avenue to avenue. So it's huge and it has an interior courtyard. They truly don't make buildings like that anymore. Helen says, see if Martin's around. Well, the funny thing is they actually were filming over here a couple weeks ago. And there were some people who caught, uh, they got some video of it and it was like a spoilers kind of video. I'm not gonna give away what was in the video. You can look it up if you want. But suffice to say the costumes were suggestive of things. On our left, Han Dynasty. This is one of my wife and I's favorite Chinese restaurants. French roast, very famous. Yeah. We have a habit of talking about food, don't we? And I get very hungry. There's um, some other buildings up here. Some of them were on the other side of the street. Uh, the, uh, what's the other one? What is it called? The, uh, starts with an A north of us. Eh, maybe somebody in the chat knows. But there's a, we'll see a couple more as we get to the 70s. There are some spectacular historic buildings. Terry says, I love how old buildings probably hold many secrets. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amber 
Chris, were you on when we saw the United Palace Theater? That's probably the most beautiful theater. It's, I think it's a church now, but uh, that's probably the most beautiful theater in the city. Yeah, and a lot of these buildings have, you know, 100 to 200 year histories. I mean, like, it's really incredible. So you can only imagine all the people and events that have taken place over the years. Nobody coming. Book lovers, there's a Barnes and Noble across the street. Once we get to 80th Street, we will have walked 150 blocks. <laughs> Which saying out loud is kind of ridiculous. everything down yeah I mean that's the thing you want a diversity you know if you're gonna have some new you gotta have some old it's part of what makes the city interesting to look at it's not so fun when everything becomes a glass tower sorry about this noise they're literally jackhammering Zabar's is across the street Terry, all the dogs are napping. Good, good. Very good. You get to walk with us instead of with them. <laughs> all right. Let's cross here. Sorry for the noise. There's the bars we were talking about earlier. Since we've hit the halfway mark, I'm going to switch hands. Ooh, that feels good. Zabar's. So Zabar's is one of the classic New York City grocery stores. They have a very long history of West Sider, rare and used books. We love our bookstores. We love our bookstores. But yeah, go. I would go to Zabar's get, you know, they have a lot of prepared foods and their baked stuff is unbelievably good. Oh, Neville mentioning uh, Jane Jacobs, who, yeah, who thanks to her helped a lot of the preservation efforts in New York City. I was just at the New York Historical Society which recently got the collection of Robert Caro. Caro wrote about Robert Moses. Robert Moses is the guy who, he was the parks commissioner and other things in New York City for decades. And he basically re, you know, a lot of what you see in New York City today is because of Robert Moses, for good or for bad. And some of the bad, was prevented by Jane Jacobs. This is one of the buildings I was mentioning before. His name, I'm just, is escaping me right this second. But if the light changes, which it is, let's go over there. Let me show you this building. I'm trying to stay on the shady side of the street, but let's go take a look at this because this is beautiful. At Apthorpe, I think it might be called. Is it called the Apthorpe? Let's go see. Yes, the app 
Beautiful. And similar to the uh, Belnord has one of those interior courtyards. So gorgeous. Beautiful. As they say, how the uh, other 1% lives. All right, when I can, I'm going to go back across the street because it is too sunny over here. I need my shade. Light's about to change, so let's head back to the other side. Our next uh, big intersection will be uh, 72nd Street, and I was going to show the uh, subway station over there because it's really cool. So that'll be what we see next. And then as I walk across, you can see some of the side street over here, the beautiful townhomes, brownstones, beautiful New York City. If only we could see. Belclair across another there's so many there's some really beautiful buildings in this area sunshine welcome yeah hopefully this inspires you know all of these buildings you can look up online get older uh, pictures and read about the history intricacy, the detail. I think that's why a lot of Americans like to travel to Europe because you see so much more of it. coming up fairway. Citarella is also it's kind of a luxury upscale grocery. Very expensive. Fairway is a little more approachable. Fairway is fun. Especially they have like huge selection of things like olive oil and cheese, like way more than at a typical supermarket. Gettysburg ma'am, welcome. It's good to see everybody hit that like button if you just joined. Help other people find the chat. Today we're walking all of Broadway. We started at 230th Street in the uh, Marble Hill neighborhood. We're past the halfway point on what should be a four and a half hour walk. We're making good time. Legs are still feeling good. Arms are still feeling good. This is the Beacon, big theater over here. They do lots of concerts and stuff. Let's see who's playing. Bono at the Beacon, that's the name. Bono. And then check out this building. I'm afraid I don't know the name of this one, but look at this, look at this building. Broadway in 74. Stunning, stunning. British Grey is here. Hey, thanks for being with us. Gosh, these old 
buildings. I mean, just spectacular. Gregory says, I can't believe how far you've walked already. Here's the Central Savings Bank. Lots of classical buildings over here. When I cross the street, I'll get a better view of the bank. saying uh, the uh, 72nd Street subway complex is pretty interesting, very pretty. There's a nice little park around it as well. Let's go take a look at both. Nobody coming. And yeah, this is very square. I'll show you the statue in a moment. But let's look at the bank first. Central Savings Bank, now an Apple Savings Bank. Uh, Ambrose with the answer, the Ansonia. The Ansonia. Here's the Ansonia. Ansonia. The Central Savings Bank. And then this is Verity Square. Let's go take a look at the uh, statue. Beautiful, and then this, you know, this is the 72nd Street subway. Got skylights. Really nice. And then all this outdoor seating area, obviously. Very popular during the day. Mark says, Bono's at the Beacon to sing alone and talk about his book. Oh, that's cool, so he's not there as YouTube. He's there as Bono. That's cool. I bet that's pretty good. There's another cool building up ahead. Another one I don't know the name of, but hopefully somebody in the chat will help us out. And again, we're going to see uh, Broadway cross Amsterdam. So we're going to have to... We're going to angle ourselves in a little bit. Oh, and if you're a shopper, the Bloomingdale's outlet's over there. Oh, beautiful. Oh, there's a Trader Joe's over there. I don't think I knew that. Gray's Papaya. Hot Dogs. One of the famous hot dog shops. Do you guys see the Gray's New York City sign with the hot dog man? When you're hungry or broke or just in a hurry. <laughs> That's great our advertising. Ian's back, checking back in. Welcome. Here's the 72, beautiful subway station. And then just check this out. Just beautiful, there's so many beautiful buildings over here. So, this is where Broadway and Amsterdam change places. Uh, so, historically, we've had issues with um, Lincoln Center. So, I'm going to try this side of the street. Hope this works. Fingers crossed. Ooh, another one of our Indian restaurants is coming up. Uh, what is it called? Sapphire. Sapphire's coming up soon. Like Sapphire. Ooh, Pizza Collective. Somebody's been telling me about that. That smelled so good. Pizza Collective. That smelled incredible. So we're in the 
Lincoln Center area. Shakespeare and Co. for our book lovers. Dark Rock says, seems like a lovely day. The birds chirping and the sounds of the sea. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. It really is spring day. Yeah, that's what we're doing. It's probably 60 degrees right now. Not too many clouds. So we're kind of, knock on wood, that the uh, phone doesn't overheat today from the sun. I'm trying to stay in the shade, but I think I've run out of shade. So, I'll wait for more tall buildings in a little bit. Midtown in the theater district. These malls between the, the two sides of Broadway. They're so pretty, all the plants and the blossoms. Oh, Flowing Happy is here. $10 Super Chat. Thank you for your live stream. Hey, Flowing Happy, thanks for being with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 10 times over. Appreciate your support today. Thank you. Up ahead in a couple blocks on our right will be Lincoln Center. Whole complex of many buildings, including Juilliard. different performing arts centers. Stand in the shade while we wait for the light. Oh. So this is 67. We started at 230. Quite a walk today. That was at another old movie theater we just passed, it's no longer. Yeah, and there's another one up ahead, the old Lincoln Center movie theater. A lot of the smaller theaters, a lot of the theaters that played, you know, independent, interesting movies have closed over the last few years. So the space is there. Really sad. And it's not always obvious what can take their place. So a lot of them sit empty for a while. So we've talked, uh, we walked uh, Central Park a lot. We've talked about Seneca Village, which was basically condemned and removed. It was a largely African-American neighborhood. People owned homes in Central Park and they removed it to make way for Central Park. So somewhat complicated history as you would imagine. And similar things happened over here, San Juan Hill, to make way for Lincoln Center. So there's this artwork on the wall over here kind of referencing that history. If you want to read about it. San Juan Hill, Seneca Village, things that came before and people there was actually a really interesting thing about Seneca Village at the uh, I was saying I was at the New York Historical Society recently really 
really interesting. So all of that is Lincoln Center. There's Alice Tully Hall. I'll try to show you the art. Broadway turning again, passing through Columbus Avenue. Ooh, and there's Shun Lee. Super wow. expensive, but that's like really old school, fancy Chinese food. If you want a really interesting experience, Shun Lee is a lot of fun. Let's see, there's David Geffen Hall. So this is where they do the ballet, opera. This is Lincoln Center. Molly asks, are we near Dante Park? This is Dante Park. Named after the uh, poet, Dante. So, so pretty over here. You can sit at Dante Park. There's often musicians on nice days or in the evening. There's Lincoln Center. For whatever reason, streaming over at Lincoln Center is super complicated. So I didn't want to walk on that side, but uh, obviously I want to show you guys. So we'll take a quick look at it from here. Don Giovanni and the New York City Ballet. And then on this side are some of the classic restaurants of Lincoln Center, Barbalude, our favorite Cafe Fiorello, which makes a mean martini and really good Italian-American food. And then a location of the Smith, which is a kind of popular small restaurant chain here in New York City. They do make good cocktails at the Smith. But of these three, our favorite is Cafe Fiorello right here in the middle. And they have a beautiful patio. done up beautifully for spring. Look at all that decoration. That's awesome. And so there's Dante and Dante's Park. And the classic, mostly at night you'd see this, the Hotel Empire sign. But coming up next, which I think Ambrose is referencing, is we're coming up to Sesame Street. Everybody back to childhood. Do you remember Sesame Street? This is Sesame Street. Sixty third and Broadway, Sesame Street. And you can see the film trucks over here. I was trying to look for a sign to see what's filming over here. See what's filming. Ah, Law and Order. Law and Order is filming here. My wife loves Law and Order. If we stuck around, we could probably see some of the some of the folks. But onwards. This is what I was referencing before. This is Lincoln Plaza Cinema's beautiful old movie theater closed. Behind it is a really cool public plaza and garden. It's really nice. It is, the sun is beating down on me now. Oof. What are we, coming up to the three hour point, 62nd Street. Ooh, it is too sunny, too sunny now. says Elmo will be in Law and Order. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh no. Say it ain't so. Do 
used to be a Best Buy over here, but it closed a while ago. God, it is so sunny over here. I'm really hoping there's some shade up ahead. So three more miles gets us to Houston Street. And then we walk Lower Manhattan. So I think we have about five and a half miles to go. I think we have about five more miles, give or take. Roberto, welcome. And if I missed you, welcome, one and all. Good to see everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us today as we explore Broadway. At 90th, we passed the halfway point. So we're in the second half. Columbus Circle now, 59th Street, Columbus Circle, also marks Central Park South. Terry, thanks for hanging on out. Thanks for stopping by. Ooh, look at the flowers in, uh, in Columbus Circle. Beautiful, beautiful. God, oh, spring in the city. Spring in New York City, folks. So this is the uh, southwest corner of Central Park. If you haven't seen Central Park recently, I've posted a bunch of videos. Billionaire's Row, 57th Street, from here. I'm hoping it's just the area, Helen, because as we get to, you know, like Times Square and stuff, I think there's just a lot more people, but if it persists, just keep me posted. So the Macy's Parade uh, starts on Central Park West near the American Museum of Natural History. So about a mile north of us, but not very far, not very far. So yeah, as we enter kind of in the next 10 blocks or so, we're gonna be entering Times Square. It's gonna be, I assume, very busy. So we may get some buffering, so just bear with us. We will get through it together. Passing Le Pan, Benchy for, oh, that sounds good for uh, gelato. Farinella for pizza, Magnolia Bakery for, I guess they're, they're famous for cupcakes and stuff, but it's their banana pudding that I recommend. Nordstrom next. 
for the shoppers among us. This is one of the rare times I'm excited for scaffolding so I can get out of the sun. Robojack says after all the beautiful buildings seen today, these skinny towers are awful. <laughs> curious how many people are going to be in Times Square. It's been such a beautiful day. It's so warm out now. I'm expecting a ton of people. So we'll find out for the next five or ten minutes. So there's two sides of Nordstrom, one on this side of the street, one on the other. The side I'm on is more, uh, I think, the uh, women's department, and then the other side of the street is men's and home, I think. We get a lot of strong feelings about the billionaire's row. Ooh, I hate standing over here. They're constructing this uh, scaffolding. I don't really like to stand when they're building or taking it down. Uh, waiting for the light, waiting for the light. 10 seconds. Can you guys let me know if the quality is looking a little better? That's where uh, Universal Music Group is. I don't think I've ever noticed that before. Huh. Still pixelated. Mm. Really don't want to start the stream over. We made it so far. What do you guys think? Let me know if it's bad enough that we should start the stream again. The thing is, the signal is actually looking fine for me. I think they're throttling me because I've been using so much data. Coming up next to the Ed Sullivan Theater, which is where Stephen Colbert tapes his show. Yeah, Helen, that's what's happening. So on my side, it still says it's 1080, but behind the scenes, they made it 480. Ugh. No. We can start over if you guys want me to. 
it's just everybody will have to rejoin. It's kind of a bummer. I think what we'll do is uh, let's keep going and then I'll post, hopefully I'll get the, the backup file and I'll post uh, the higher quality version later because it'll be a whole thing if I have to start it over. So I apologize for those of you if it doesn't look so great right now, but I'll post a higher quality copy when I get home. Yeah, Neville, also where uh, David Letterman taped, yeah, the Ed Sullivan Theater. Beautiful. Okay, that's the decision. So we'll we'll finish the walk. And then I'll post, hopefully, assuming nothing goes wrong, I will post a higher quality version when I get home for anybody who missed or wants to revisit. Red light. like Minecraft. That's what we're aiming for. <laughs> Angelina, it's like a coffee and pastry shop. Hey, touring, welcome. Everybody who just joined, welcome. Oh, coming up next, Stardust Theater. That's where they, uh, that's a diner where they, uh, they sing. And then after that, and I just learned about this not too long ago. There's going to be a Back to the Future musical. So we'll get to see that. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining, for watching, for chatting. Leaving a thumbs up. If you're new, consider subscribing for more of these walks all around New York City. for hot chocolate. Yeah, I've heard that. I have heard that. There's the Stardust Diner. Again, where they sing to you. There's always a line here, and I have to say, never, I've never wanted to be I've never wanted to go there. <laughs> no issue if anybody else wants to. I'd rather go to Junior's and then go to a Broadway show. <laughs> Times Square. There's two Times Square locations of Juniors. One is coming up on our left. This is the Times Square area. Nobody coming. Juniors is great. Kind of deli slash diner food and obviously some of the best cheesecake in the world. Metal okay. says and they say Hollywood's running out of ideas. <laughs> you know? Nostalgia sells. That's my takeaway. There's Junior's. Oh, so good. We had Eileen's cheesecake, but Junior's is very good. 
Classic New York City slice, Sabaro. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Krispy Kreme. Saw cats back in the spring of '86. Hey, bet that was fun. Steve says, "Wow, I didn't know those sparrows still existed." Well, that one was closed, so <laughs> out of business. So. There's an Olive Garden here. The funny story about the Olive Garden is because it's in Times Square, they sell tickets for you to go there during New Year's to see the ball drop. And when I say they sell tickets, they sell them for literally hundreds of dollars. So it's always hysterical to me imagining somebody paying you know, $400 a person to go to Olive Garden. But as they say in New York City, location, location, location. <laughs> ah, Turing is a fan of the graham cracker crust. So you might like Eileen's, that's what we had the other night and last night. <laughs> might again tonight. <laughs> Here we are, Times Square. TKTS, where you can get discount Broadway tickets, and then the famous Red Steps. been with us before you know my favorite spot in Times Square is this little triangle where if you stand and listen carefully you can hear an old decades old art project called the Times Square Hum. Let's go see if we can hear it today. in Times Square is be wary of people who walk up to you trying to hand you things because they will expect to be paid. Oh, there's the naked cowboy. We haven't seen him in a while. Got a nice thumbs up over there. We haven't seen him in a long time. Ah, Robojacks heard the hum. AC heard the hum. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's, if you look up 
Uh, if you search online, Times Square Hum, you can read about it. It's a decades old art project. And even with all the construction and all sorts of work that goes on here in Times Square, it has survived the decades, which is kind of incredible. This is where the ball drop is. There's the New Year's ball. My best If you're here and you have to eat around here, Juniors, Carmines, Tonys, Sardis, John's, those are the places I would probably recommend eating. And they actually have good food. It's not like, you know, I think it's, you know, Times Square, you talk about it, you know, it's touristy, obviously. But there actually are some places that have decent food. Yeah, Turing, I understood. I understood. All good. Coming up to 42nd Street. There's Harry Potter and the, uh, what do they call it, Cursed Child. Ambrose, yeah, you have to kind of stand there for a second. And it sort of sounds, you know that sound where if somebody runs their finger on a glass filled with water? It's kind of similar to that. We so okay there's a place here where i can put my phone down for a second i'm gonna restart this stream so that we get the higher quality again i'm sorry to do that but i want you guys to have a really good experience so just give me two minutes give me uh give me two minutes Sorry about that. Yeah, we were getting throttled, so too many complaints about the video quality. So we're doing a different thing, but we're back. If you're joining, leave a like. It'll help other people come back to us. And when I get home tonight, I'll try to stitch the videos together really high quality. But I want to finish together. And if you're watching live, I want you to have a really good experience. Ambrose. Thanks for being with us. How are we looking now? Hopefully we're back in business. AC, Ambrose, leave a thumbs up. It'll help other people come back. And hopefully we're looking good again. Otherwise, I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> Again, the joys of live streaming. Doing technical repairs on the fly. Doing our best. So we just passed 42nd Street. So 40 more blocks to Houston Street, that two more miles. And then everything south of Houston. Uh, getting good feedback, good feedback, thank you. Sorry about earlier. I thought I had figured out a solution 
I guess it worked for a while, but eventually, eventually they caught on. Brenda Free, Helen, AC. Thanks for coming back, you guys. If you're gonna eat over here, there's a location of Joe's Pizza. And speaking of Spider-Man, that's another Spider-Man spot. And then to our left, beautiful Bryant Park. We're now in the garment district, as you can see, where they historically made clothing. And they've done tons of uh, stuff over here to pedestrianize different parts of Broadway. So you can walk in the street, you can sit. They have these nice chairs. Great place to have lunch or just to relax, have a coffee. Wow. A lot has changed. So I did this walk two years ago and I have memories of just, at this point, I think I was suffering. This was one of the first walks that I did when I started to do this. And I'm feeling pretty good. So a lot has changed over the last couple years. We're feeling good. And we're doing it live now, which is fun. Hanging out with you guys. But yeah, if you're just joining and coming back, hit that like button, it'll help other people come back to us. through the garment district and at 34th street we will of course run into macy's We're gonna see one of my favorite sites in New York City when we get to, I think, 32nd Street, if I remember. The Gimbal Sky Bridge. I love a sky bridge. Bear in the Garden, thanks for coming back. Coming up to 37th Street. We started at 230, so once we get to 30th Street, we will have walked 200 blocks. 200 blocks. Beautiful church over here. Uh, we go on this side of the street. Might stay on this side so we can get up close to Macy's. And there's shade over here. Such a sunny day today. Oh. There's the Empire State Building. At 34th Street and 5th Avenue. Yeah, Helen, this has been uh, quite the marathon. So 20 blocks to a mile. So 200 blocks will be the 10 mile mark, leaving us 4.1 miles to go. And 
according to my watch at least, uh, I started it a little late, but according to my watch, we're at the three hour, nine minutes. I burned 1300 calories. 18 minute, 40 second pace, and we've done 10.17 miles. And I thought it would tell me my steps, uh, but that should be about 20,000 steps. And with four miles to go, that'll be about 8,000 more steps. AC was reminiscing about visiting Music Row on 48th Street. Amber says 1300 calories equals one cheesecake. And hey, we still got some calories yet to burn. I do feel good though. Last time I did this, like even my arms were tired, but I'm feeling pretty good. We have come a long way, friends. We have come a long way. You walk, you know, 10,000 steps a day for two years. <laughs> Beautiful view of the Empire State Building. And then this brings us to Herald Square and Macy's. Let's hop across. Macy's is doing its flower show right now. I haven't been yet, but on my to-do list. <laughs> Hope to get there before it closes. I know a lot of people filmed it already though. Sally, welcome. Good to see you. Again, they're doing the Macy's flower show right now. So the entire inside of Macy's decorated with flowers like these windows. marker here marks the centennial of the Herald Square building, the world's largest store, founded 1858. And then they moved to this building in 1902, it said. Marv said no YouTube notification. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's why I was really hoping we didn't have to start over, but I want you guys to have a good time. But uh, later tonight, I will, uh, I'll put the two video files together and I'll post it. So anybody who wants to come back, you know, and see different parts of the walk, the whole thing will be higher quality then. It's doing it again? Shouldn't be doing it again. We're on a different network now. If it is doing it again, it should be short-lived. It should be just buffering. We're on a we've changed networks. Unless it's a prism thing, but I don't think other I don't think I've seen it happening to other streamers. I don't know. Tell me in a couple minutes. But we're on a different network altogether, so. It shouldn't happen again. Ollie, welcome back. Coming up to Greeley Square. So we just passed Herald Square, which is where you could visit Macy's. Coming up next, Greeley Square. And at 32nd, we'll see my favorite site. One of my favorite sites, at least. The beautiful Gimbal Sky Bridge. Well, and I thought the issue was focus issues, which I don't think we're having.
so it's either Prism or YouTube, I guess, because we've literally, I'm literally on a different network. We're not even on the same network as before. Here's the Horace Greeley statue. Beautiful flowers over here. But let me show you guys the sky bridge. I love this view. So we've seen various sky bridges before, but this one's unique in that it's multiple stories. This is a two-story sky bridge. Just stunning. I love it. Uh, and in that direction, that would take you right over to Penn Station. Well, we tried. I will, uh, I'm gonna continue along. We will finish our Broadway walk. And then, like I said, if the quality is an issue, I'll post a higher quality version when I get home for our replay viewers. But otherwise, let's finish beautiful Broadway entering Koreatown. So if you ever wanted Korean fried chicken, have many fond memories of doing uh, karaoke in this area with some friends <laughs> and more than my fair share of soju if anybody knows what that is I have also noticed that on YouTube, like when you start a new video, they've been way more aggressive at using lower quality. Their bandwidth costs must be so ridiculous that I think they're trying to bump people down. So I guess it wouldn't surprise me if it's a YouTube thing and they just, they've just, uh, it's a Virgin Hotel. If they just got the balance wrong and they're being too aggressive. Gregory says, is there a video of you doing karaoke? No, and I'll make sure that never happens. Burn the tapes. For a while, they were talking about like making it uh, 4K that you'd have to pay for premium in order to see 4K quality. I think they backed down on that because people got so upset. But I think what, they, what they're doing instead is defaulting to lower quality. And you have to fiddle with the settings to get it to go up. There's Milk Bar, very famous New York bakery known for Things like their cereal milk, compost cookies, and so forth. Really, oh, their cake pops, those are good. That's probably my favorite, the cake pops. Yum. Tin Pan Alley for any of our historic New York lovers. Tin Pan Alley. Lots of internet points if you know what Tin Pan Alley is.
Here's another location of the Smith up ahead. It's good for groups because they have different types of food. And they make very good cocktails. Another pedestrian zone. So let's walk in the street. Love a pedestrian zone. This is what I want New York to look like. Love this. Anita Gelato, that's really good. I've had that. Who doesn't like gelato? This is La Pecora Bianca. It's kind of a small, there's a few of them in the city. Pretty good Italian food. Captioning read it as I need a gelato. Well, where's the lie, Ambrose? Where's the lie? So, again, this is another spot where avenues intersect. So, Broadway will make our way left, Fifth Avenue, you'd make your way right. And there is beautiful Madison Square Park. Let's go walk alongside Madison Square Park for a couple of reasons. It's beautiful and we can get a daytime view of that amazing sculpture and uh, we'll get one last view of the Empire State Building and then BAM! The Flatiron Building. So many beautiful sights around here. Let's head into the park for a sec. Hi. And it's super busy, so we may get some buffering. So just bear with me a minute or two. Beautiful Madison Square Park. And you can see Empire State Building just behind us. And they installed recently a brand new dog run over here. Kind of pretty. See a dog run with the uh, Flatiron Building in the background, really fun. So funny that said that sign said big dog run only. Go over here for a little dog run. <laughs> but well, let's head back along Broadway continue our path. Ooh, King David Tacos. If anybody was with us at Prospect Park, uh, the Brooklyn Botanic Garden, I mentioned 
that sometimes at Madison Square Park there's a location of King David Tacos. They make Austin, Texas style breakfast tacos. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Flatiron building covered in classic New York City scaffolding. Can't wait for that to come down. And if you've been reading about the uh, Flatiron building, there's a whole controversy because it was sold at auction, but the guy who won didn't pay. And now they're figuring out what happens next. Might go back up for auction. There's a eatily across the street, which is really fun. It's like an Italian market. They have little Italian restaurants inside. Really fun. And they have a great wine shop. Amber says they taste like home. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. I recommend it. I mean, it's not, you know, <laughs> in Texas, You go to the cheapest place, like where you spend a handful of dollars and you'd get something so incredible that here would cost, you know, $17. <laughs> but for being in New York and with access to New York ingredients at New York prices, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I do recommend it. It's fun to try. But it's, you know, here, the price of one gets you like three in Texas. <laughs> Helen says they can't find the guy. Yeah, I know. The whole story about the Flatiron Building is hysterical. It's such a saga. It's such a saga. Oh, I'll show you guys a little tourist trip up, uh, trick up ahead. Yeah, Helen, originally, but I've been in New York for 19 years, so I think of myself as a New Yorker now. So coming up to 22nd Street, this is a Harry Potter store. But right over here, you'll see this little wooden frame. And if you stand behind it and you have someone on the other side of it taking your photo, it perfectly frames the Empire State Building. So let me go show you guys. Obviously, if you get on the ground, you can get some cool angles with it, but it's a cool way to get a great shot with the Empire State Building. Ambrose says, I identify as a New Yorker, although I live in New Jersey. See, I like it. Ooh, look at that flower shop. So we're going to do one more interesting curve up ahead, Union Square, the Union of various different avenues. And Broadway kind of runs at an angle across it, which you'll see in a moment. Park Avenue, University Place. Broadway, you'll see in a moment. Ah, oh, but look again, all these beautiful buildings.
it feels when you're when you're really standing in the sun it feels almost like a summer day it's beautiful today it feels amazing outside Traveling D. I don't know if I set up that command, but it's uh, 2.30 here in New York City. If you hit uh, exclamation point weather, that should have the uh, weather and the time. Who did uh, Beecher's close? Wow, Beecher's closest location. That's a bummer. That's a really good cheese shop. That's a bummer. Oh, it looks like there's a green market going on at Union Square, so we'll walk through that. Yeah, and do us a favor, we lost... Well, we had to start the stream over. We lost a lot of people, so if you could do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button, it'll help us out a lot. Helen says they started at Pike Place in Seattle. Oh, I didn't know that. Famous Pike Place. Love Seattle, beautiful city. Famous Paragon Sporting Goods Company, very old sports store. Funny, it says New York City's pickleball spot. Pickleball. I feel like that's the talk of the town right now. They took over Woolman Rink at Central Park with pickleball courts. Still can't believe they did that instead of roller skating. Yeah, Ambrose, you saw that? He was wearing the uh, TCS New York City Marathon. So we're coming up to Union Square. Fabulous spot to sit, people watch. They do a green market. And during the holidays, they do a great holiday market. Looks like the green market today. Dorg Rock says, I'm in Seattle now, but once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker. Or if you're Ambrose, just always a New Yorker. <laughs> The building at the end, by the way, was an old Tweed building, Boss Tweed. Goes back to those days. And this is the green market. I will say, I will, I will say the some of the stuff here is very expensive, but you can get some really cool ingredients here. Cheese, obviously vegetables, but bread, flowers. Sometimes they even have like wine and whiskey. But it's, even if you're not gonna buy anything, it's really fun to browse and walk around. Andrew's Honey. Here we got our weather. Wow, so it's gone up 10 degrees. We started at 55 Fahrenheit, so it's now 64 degrees. Wind at seven miles an hour and not very humid. This place is pretty good, bread alone. Ooh, and there's some pie. Oh, yum, everything looks good now. Yeah, let's check the watch for an update since we started the stream over. We kind of lost our YouTube timer. 
but let's see what the watch says. Three hours, 35 minutes, 1467 calories. We've slowed our pace a bit to 1854, probably when we've had to stop and start over. But we've done 11.38 miles, so three miles to go. Three more miles. There's uh, the Mahatma Gandhi statue here in Union Square over to my right. Surrounded by beautiful, beautiful blossoms. Amazing. So Union Square, I mean, you know, there's a subway station here that connects a lot of the lines. Uh, but this is, you know, it's famous, you know, there are protests and arts. You can see the chess players over here. But kind of a big meeting place here in New York City. Looks like a big chess match going on. Serious chess going on. Oh, well, that's funny, Marv. So Marv found our channel. After we streamed the uh, some of the uh, New York City Marathon, he was looking for himself. That's funny. I love it. I find it very difficult to stream the marathon, sort of like parades. If you couldn't tell, I have somewhat restless legs. <laughs> So it's somewhat hard for me to stand in one place. So what I did at the marathon, I, you know, I tried to stand from time to time, but kind of walk to different locations to see the runners in different places. It's hard for me to just stand in one spot for six hours. <laughs> Probably made it a little difficult to find yourself. I think this stream attracted some new viewers, so I'll let, if you just joined, I'll let you know. We actually started this walk three and a half hours ago at 230th Street. We're now at 13th Street, if you want to do the math in your head. <laughs> we are walking all of Broadway in Manhattan. We've got a few miles to go. We've done quite a bit of it. Coming to the home stretch, these next few miles. Mighty Bull, welcome back. Robert, Doug, good to see everybody. There's the Strand, 18 miles of books, they like to say. One of the old, uh, this used to be a bookseller's row. And I think it's basically the last one standing. An amazing bookstore, if you've never been. Marv, the other person you have to check is Dutch Maz, because after I signed off, he was in the same area I was hanging around. And uh, 
he took it from there. <laughs> Grace Church. Really beautiful, isn't it? Especially with the blossoming trees. Tenth Street, two hundred and twenty blocks down. All right, folks, I think we can officially start to say we're in the home stretch. We are, as we crossed 14th, we're in the village. This is, as we cross 8th Street up ahead, we're entering kind of New York University territory. And just think, we've gone from City College all the way uptown, Columbia, and many in between all the way now down to New York University. Brenda says they still use water towers at buildings. Yeah, yeah, they do. So the reason a lot of the buildings here are kind of five or six stories is those don't require water towers. But if you live on the fifth or sixth floor, having to walk up every day and down every day, better have good, good muscles. Hey, Marzen, welcome back. Thanks. Yeah, we're in the home stretch. Just crossed Eighth Street, so we've done 222 blocks. <laughs> it's so ridiculous village, soon enough entering Soho. So we are making good progress. We're feeling pretty good. I definitely feel it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm trying to imagine the uh, great saunter and doing more than twice this walk. I'm trying to imagine that. Do I think I could? I think so. I think I could. Is it... Does it give me good thoughts? Not really. <laughs> You know that moment when you're having pizza and you're like, I could have one more slice of pizza? That's this walk. The great saunter is like, I'm just gonna eat the whole pizza. Like technically can probably do it. We'll probably be feeling the repercussions for some number of days. <laughs> These are all NYU buildings on our right, by the way.
George Rucker, good to see you. Welcome, everybody. And of course, as we start to get into the Soho neighborhood, within a few blocks, you get the amazing, I, I really love the architecture in Soho. You know, a little more stone, some metalwork. You start to see some of the fire escapes, columns. And like, what's really fun is all the buildings are fairly distinct. They're all kind of, they all kind of unique. So it's always fun just staring at the buildings down here. only me watch Gabe do the uh, great saunter yeah I put on the uh, the first video of that this morning just to you know just kind of get in the frame of mind if anybody hasn't seen I'll, I'll add a bunch of links after this I'll put the Bar Bowery Boys uh, history podcast about the Broadway uh, I'll put Gabe's great saunter walk I'll put some interesting links Mars, and I'll put your video of the Great Bridges Walk. Yeah, there's a few of us who've lost our minds and love doing these uh, marathon walks. But like I said, Broadway, this is my favorite. I mean, I think the saunter would be a fun accomplishment and I think this, the Great Bridges Walk likewise would be an amazing accomplishment and really fun in its way but the, the but just to do Broadway you do, it doesn't there's so much history and it's like I feel like a lot of people could do this walk John Burke, hey, good to see you. Here's Bond Street, check out some of the buildings down there. It's just so beautiful in this area. Oh, it's a fun walk. And I'll, I'll, when I put up the new video later, I'll tag all the neighborhoods. Because that's, that's probably part of, the, part of why I find it so interesting. You know, we've gone Marble Hill, has a whole interesting history. Inwood, Fort George, Fort Washington, Washington Heights, Hamilton Heights, Harlem, Morningside Heights, the Upper West Side, Lincoln Center, and Lincoln Square. The Theater District, Times Square, Garment District, Flatiron, Union Square, The Village, and Soho. I mean, it's just like incredible. You see, you see so much of the city. And Ambrose, that's totally okay. Like I, you know, if you have to break it into parts, that's totally fine. I just think it's like one of those, if you're, if you're in pretty good shape, you could probably do it on a Saturday. And if you're smart, unlike I am, you know, you'd, you'd stop for lunch halfway through. <laughs> you don't have to be a maniac. Yeah, Mars and walking the Broadway is free. Yeah, and like, you know, if you if you put on the Bowery Boys or another thing, you know, you could learn about it as you go. And if you did break it up into different parts, in Washington Heights, for example, you go on the Audubon Mural Project website, find the map of the Audubon murals. Look at these beautiful buildings. Uh, in Washington Heights, you look up the Audubon Murals Project and, you know, just do that for one day and then do a different, you know, do a different section another day.
the other one that's you know fun but it's more of a physical accomplishment than this one has I feel like so much history is you know do the do the Hudson River Greenway so walk the west side of Manhattan again you can walk the uh, whole length of the island but you know that's just along the waterfront which is beautiful but I feel you know this is historic in the sense that it walks across so many neighborhoods and that one you're not really in the neighborhoods that one in many ways is easier though because you don't have to stop for red lights <laughs> Uh, AC has a great idea. I was thinking walk, bagel stop, walk, lunch, walk, cheesecake, <laughs> walk, cocktails. That's, there you go, make a day of it. I like the sound of that. I really like the sound of that. That's good thinking. Again, you don't have to be a maniac. You are allowed to do the walk in whatever form or manner makes sense for you even if it just means watching ours. So many beautiful buildings. Oh, uh, when we get over to Uniqlo, I like uh, the store Uniqlo, but they have a flower wall that I wanted to see. So we are in Soho now, south of Houston Street. Houston, not Houston. It's a different person. So in Texas, it's named after Sam Houston. I forget the guy's name here, but his name was Houston, different person. Thus, different pronunciation. Prada on our right. Doug has interesting connections with Broadway. What are your connections with Broadway? Let us know. Do tell. Marzen, that's another one where I would definitely start top down because finishing at Inwood Hill Park <laughs> and kind of climbing around to get to the, uh, I'm thinking of 181, the area around uh, the George Washington Bridge. And then again, the area around the Henry Hudson Bridge. You have to do a lot of hiking. I'd rather get that way out of the way first than to walk, you know, 12 or 13 miles and have to do that. So I really, for these long walks, I would do north to south for sure. Oh, there's the flower wall. Lots of lines over here. Oh, the line is for the Museum of Ice Cream. How funny. I was wondering where that was, but there's the flower. Let's see if I can get a better view over here. Cool Aunt has the details. William Houston is who his street was named after. Marv says the walk goes by quickly in Lower Manhattan. Well, it does go by quickly on its own, but also I think once, once you have the finish line in your sights, you know, don't you get a second wind? I think we got a second wind, so legs are feeling good, arms are feeling good. My feet, on the other hand, don't necessarily feel so good, but that's, it's not a shoes thing. I think it's a walking 14 miles thing. <laughs> All the shoppers here in Soho. We were talking about bagels earlier. Sadel's is down here, and then to our left, Balthazar. If you want to do a little celeb spotting, if you can get a table inside at Balthazar on the weekend at like a prime time, you'll probably see somebody. You'll probably see somebody.
<laughs> Marv, I, you know, I think tourism is back. I think tourism is back. Once the weather changed, like, it's so funny. Things were really busy during the Christmas holidays. And then like the day after Christmas, it just, the city was felt so empty. But once the cherry blossoms started to come in, it's like everybody came out. Ambrose says you eat at Balthazar's. I've eaten there twice. <laughs> what I do do with Balthazar is they sell their bread at Whole Foods. So I get Balthazar bread. It's the next best thing. <laughs> I think, what did we do? It was like Lisa's, uh, was it? I forget why. We went, was it, maybe it was one of her birthdays. We might have done a brunch there. That, that must be it. On TV, Jen, good to see everybody who just joined. If I missed you, welcome. If you're just joining, we've actually been streaming now for just about four hours. We had to start over because of the video quality, but uh, today we walked, we are walking the length of Broadway in Manhattan, all 14 miles. And we're coming to the last couple of miles right now. What is this? Slu Mu Institute, a celebration of slime. Fascinating. All the things you didn't know. Oh, that's so funny. It's a whole slime store. I feel like these are the sorts of things I'm supposed to become familiar with as a new father. Slime. Can't wait to have a uh, apartment covered in slime. Yeah, <laughs> hey. yeah this was not. Uh, not so much a sightseeing walk, though we're, you know, we're trying to point out some interesting things along the way and talk some of the history. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of the accomplishment in and of itself. Pearl River Mart, that's a very cool store. And just, again, beautiful architecture down here. <laughs> Ambrose. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, trying to figure out the ways of the youths. It's Blick, the art store. It's a fun shop. I think if I had to pick one store in New York City, though, it's probably B&H, the photo store. Could spend hours just walking around there. Oh, somebody's blocking the box, huh? Blocking the box. <laughs> Disaster. And this is why you don't drive in New York City. Coming up to Canal Street next. Chinatown, Little Italy, Lower East Side. And to our right would also take us to Tribeca, the triangle beneath the canal.
a canal just like some of the other big streets in Manhattan is a car driving disaster total disaster let's see if we'll even be able to cross the street anything near the tunnels people just treat it's just horrible it's very unsafe i'll be honest so you have to be super so like the light's about to change in 10 seconds all these cars are gonna be stuck in the intersection it's very unsafe so just be you got to be super careful at some of these intersections like this is a disaster the light's about to change stupid so stupid so stupid sorry i'm like holding the camera as high in the air as i can so that the truck driver stops so stupid uh, if you want to buy a purse if you want to buy a rolex with two x's this might be a good spot Lispinard Street. So if we were to hang a right again, that would take us to Tribeca. We could go over to the Bean. Take a look, free to look, take a look, take a look. Oh, that's so funny. They get, take a look, free to look. Not free to buy. Oh, there's the watches. Rolex 2X. Prado. Coach with a K. Ron TV says a hood slide. <laughs> Just imagining my wife at home shaking her head. Amber says honking will cure everything. Okay. I don't know what's happening here. I like that hood slide idea though, that's pretty funny. And are they gonna stop? Yes, they stopped. This is, uh, we are currently playing a real life version of the video game Frogger. I am your frog. <laughs> There's an advertisement there's going to be a Banksy exhibit. But how do you know it's the real thing? How would you know it's the real thing? Jenga building, by the way, is on Leonard Street, if you want to look it up. We visited uh, on a stream not too long ago, got to see the bean. But up ahead, we're going to see some of my favorite buildings. One of my favorite of all New York City, the Woolworth Building. Early Gothic style skyscraper. Also tons of history. But today we have a main destination. Again, started at 230th Street. We are going to number one Broadway. And then for good measure, we'll cross the street and we'll tap our hand on the fencing at the bottom of the battery facing the Statue of Liberty. And that's where I'll say tag you're it and one of you has to walk the other way back up. Hey, Rebecca, good to see you. Red Star asking, what time is it in New York City? Check the watch, 3.04 p.m. We have been walking for four hours, five minutes. We've really slowed down. We're now doing a 19 minute pace, not very impressive. 
Look at this building, this is gorgeous. So cool. Grand transportation transformation of a New York City landmark, 108 Leonard. That's cool. Traffic jam. So we are in well into lower Manhattan, Civic Center, which is where a lot of the uh, government buildings are. But you know, probably most famous, of course, New York City Hall, right across the street from the Brooklyn Bridge. A lot of the courthouses and other stuff down here. And then, of course, as we continue along, Fidei into the Battery. So, some of the earliest history of New York City. Down here. Top of the David Dinkins Municipal Building over there. Really pretty. It's one of my favorite buildings on the outside. The inside is a municipal mess, meaning it's uh, <laughs> it's like they haven't put any money into it in decades. But it looks really nice on the outside. coming because there is a fire truck. I don't know if it's coming or going, but for our sake, it's blocking the traffic. Nearby also, uh, the African burial ground. There's a lot of really difficult history down here as well, as you would imagine. There are the clocks of the Old Sun newspaper. It shines for all, it reads. The sun shines for all. One of the great taglines. Becca says there's a whole buzz down here. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple spots along the way that weren't so busy, but you know, it's later in the day. say this area, you know, weekdays during the day is when it's really, really moving. We were down here a little bit last night, actually, and it was totally dead, totally dead. All right, City Hall Park coming up on our left with beautiful, beautiful blossoms. Look at that. One more view of the municipal building with the sun clock. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Crossing chambers. Off to our right in a little bit, we'll start to see views of One World Trade. Ooh, tons of people crossing. They probably just came across the Brooklyn Bridge, I bet. And I bet, I bet it's a tour and they're going to the World Trade Center next or a field trip. It's a ton of kids. How cool to go on a field trip to New York City. Ah, Red Star, it's my pleasure, my pleasure. If you're new here, I hope you'll check out the channel. We have lots of videos. Sounds like there's music in City Hall Park. Wow. 
up next, the Woolworth building. Wow, the trees are totally blossomed in uh, City Hall Park. Beautiful. Really pretty. If you're really into the blossoms, we posted a video of Central Park a couple days ago when the park was really, really looking good. So hopefully you'll check that out. Well, let's go get a close up at Woolworth. And then shortly after that, One World Trade Center. See the little church that stood. Ooh, that car's going the wrong way. What are they doing? They are going, whoop, whoop, oh gosh. That is not, that is not how you do that. Wow. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> That's not fun to watch. Uh, we'll see the little church that stood. We'll see uh, Trinity Church. We saw Trinity Cemetery hours ago. <laughs> and Charging Bowl, which will bring us to Bowling Green and one Broadway. So we're almost to the very end, folks. Oh, here is the Woolworth building covered in ornate Gothic detail. Beautiful. Let me show you one of the entryways. Love the Woolworth building. I think it's so beautiful. And if you have a spare hundred million dollars, a mere hundred million dollars, there's an incredible penthouse available at the top of the Woolworth building. So if you're looking for some real estate, that might interest you. There's so much history and beautiful old buildings. Vesey Street. So this is St. Paul's Chapel. I called it the little chapel that stood because during the September 11 attacks, somehow, some would say miraculously, survived with very minimal damage. Uh, Doug is in the market. He says, I'll take two. That's how you do it. That is how you do it. But this is the beautiful St. Paul's Chapel. <laughs> and then across the street, you have the uh, Fulton Center. And then let me show you this direction one last time. City Hall Park, the David Dinkins Municipal Building. Top of the Woolworth Building over here on his side. 
And if you walk this path, this takes you right over to the Brooklyn Bridge. So there's just a ton of stuff in a very short area right over here. And then if you were to go down either Vesey Street or Fulton Street, of course you have One World Trade Center. And let me show you this view of the Oculus. So obviously today we're just finishing up Broadway, but we've done many walks of these areas. So if you want to see more from One World Trade, Oculus, we have many videos to offer you. Got a funny one to show you in just a second over here at Day. I took some pictures of this. If you follow us on Instagram, this may look a little familiar to you. This one's always kind of funny to see. This is uh, 11 John. Hey, Soulmates is here. And Ron TV just subscribed. Hey, we're happy to have you. Krista is watching on her lunch break. <laughs> Rebecca, yep. Today, our goal was to walk all of Broadway in Manhattan, 14.1 miles. We are in the last mile. It has been quite a fun walk, quite a journey. Of course I did, we, we had to restart the stream. So uh, later tonight, I'll try to stitch the two videos together and post it as just one continuous path. Hopefully we've inspired some folks to do this walk themselves. It's really fun. Coming up to Zuccotti Park. And if anybody knows our good friend Dutch Maz, we would not pass this area without visiting. Double check. Let's go say hi to double check. plaza over here. Zuccotti Park is really fun. Do they still have it? Let me see if they still have it. Do they? Do they? Do they? Oh, they take it down. They used to have a beautiful flower sculpture at the end, but I guess they took it down. But let's see, double check, another survivor of the September 11 attacks. Pat on the head for double check. Read you the plaque. The everyman businessman presence in Liberty Park who before had faded into the background amongst his human brethren has been called the survivor. He was lifted, battered yet whole from the dust and rubble after the September 11, 2001 tragedy. The parks have since been rebuilt and this bronze man sits near his original site bearing scratches and bruises he sustained that day. It's a poignant reminder of hope and endurance for us all. Double check by Seward Johnson. All right, let's cross Liberty Street. Again, you could walk down there. That'll take you to the Memorial and also a place called Liberty Park, which is a really beautiful park overlooking the Memorial. This is Zuccotti Park and look at the tulips and everything. Oh, beautiful afternoon in New York City. 
fun end, coming to the end of our little 14 mile marathon today. So we'll see Trinity Church next, followed by Charging Bull and Bowling Green bringing us to number one Broadway. Doug heading out. Hey, it was great to have you. Thanks for hanging out with us. This boy acting brand new. Here's the Trinity building, by the way. Look at this entryway. Zeep asking, is it hot? Yeah, it is in the sun. It's 60 degrees right now, going up to 66, which isn't too bad, but it's super, super sunny today. This is Trinity Church. So at 155th Street, long time ago in this walk, we did see another part of their uh, an outpost of Trinity Church, the uh, cemetery. They have a large cemetery at 155th Street that we walked past. But this itself is historic Trinity Church. Where if you could travel back in time, you could sit alongside the likes of Alexander Hamilton. And again, we were down here briefly last night where at night, this stained glass like really looks beautiful. So if you wanna see the stained glass at night, we have a video from yesterday where you can check that out. We also went that way and saw the stock exchange in Fearless Girl. So that was at the corner of Wall and Broad, Wall Street and Broadway. All right, my friends, we're getting close. I can feel it. We're getting mighty close. We're getting mighty close to the end of our walk here. And <laughs> Marv with the $5 super chat in lieu of a half marathon medal. Hey, big, big, big New York City. Thank you to Marv. Thanks for doing this little marathon with us. I was wondering how I would feel. I feel pretty good. Definitely feels like I walked 14 miles, but we've done okay. Change. We're gonna come up to Morris Street in a moment. Our good friend Dutch likes to call Charging Bull Morris after the street, since he stands just opposite. So let's go take a visit to Morris, the Charging Bull. And let's see how long the line is today. And as I always like to ask, do you prefer the front of the bowl or the rear? <laughs> hey, Brenda, thanks for being with us. Thanks for your support. Love to having you. And yeah, big shout out to my wife. My beautiful wife, Lisa, giving me lots of this free time today do this silly walk with you guys, but it's been real fun. So here is Morris. Which means there is our charging bowl. 
huge line, huge, huge lines of people. Adair, good to see you. Yeah, soulmates, just being here, hanging out, chatting, leave a like, subscribe, share the video with a friend. We're just happy to have you with us. Here is Charging Bull. Big Orn asks, do they let you enter Trinity Church? They do indeed. You can tour the grounds, you can, and you can, of course, go to the church. They have a ton of security, though. A lot of the stuff down here has very intense security that, that goes back to September 11. Uh, and streaming is, like, I mean, I, don't, I generally don't stream inside anyways, but especially not when there's all sorts of security to deal with. But if you were here, you can, of course, visit. So do you grab life by the horns or by the... <laughs> as usual, as I often find, it is the back of the bull that tends to have a longer line than the front. So let's quickly hop across the street. This is where things get a little interesting, folks, in terms of this walk. So, as has happened many times before, Broadway splits. You can go left to Whitehall Street. The first part is still called Broadway, but it becomes Whitehall Street, where you can end here at number one Broadway. I'm choosing to end here at number one Broadway today, but you could of course take a left and go to uh, continue along Whitehall Street. This is Bowling Green, one of the oldest parks in New York City. Tons of history happened here, dating all the way back to the 1700s. We'll go read some of the plaques. It does have a plaque to George T. Delcourt, publisher and philanthropist whose many gifts beautify New York City. You might know the name, Delcourt Theater or the Delcourt clock at uh, Central Park Zoo. Oh, look at these flowers. Absolutely stunning. Mighty Bull with us. Got to see Morris. Thanks for hanging out with us. Let's go over here. I want to read this plaque to you guys. This is a fun one. So Bowling Green, the first public park to be established in New York, March 12, 1733. Resolved that this corporation will lease a piece of land lying at the lower end of Broadway, fronting to the fort to some of the inhabitants of the said Broadway in order to be enclosed to make a Bowling Green, thereof with walks therein for the beauty and ornament of the said street, as well as for the recreation and delight of the inhabitants of this city. Incredible, 1733. And obviously they spoke and wrote a little differently back then. Zit's going to New York City first time on Wednesday, hoping it's not too cold. I don't, uh, you know, it's like in the 50s and 60s right now. It's pretty nice. So this uh, was the U.S. Custom House. It is currently home to the National Museum of the American Indian. And if you do global entry, uh, that's where I did my global entry interview. So they have some federal offices in there, but let's pop across the street. This is where we can go, yay, cheer. This is number one Broadway. So this is officially marking the end of our walk. I'm gonna, after this in a second, we'll go down there, we'll go to the battery and we're gonna sit by the Statue of Liberty. But marking the 14.1 miles from 230th Street in Marble Hill all the way to here, number one Broadway. We have walked Broadway, all of it, at least the Manhattan portion. Adjoining this site was the first Dutch fort 
on Manhattan Island known as Fort New Amsterdam. The first house was erected here before 1664. In 1771, Captain Archibald Kennedy built here his residence, which was used in 1776 by General Washington as his headquarters, and later by General Howe during the British occupation. It was later used as a hotel. Torn down 1882, it was replaced by the Washington Building, which was transformed in 1920 and 21 into this building for occupancy by its owners, the International Mercantile Marine Company, and is now known as Number One Broadway. And LEL! 1999 Super Chat. One dollar for each mile and some extra for a refreshing cup of iced coffee. Hey, now you're talking. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 20 times over, big New York City, thank you. A big shout out to everybody who joined along the way. Our mods, our friends, new friends, old friends. We love hanging on out. Let's cross into the battery. We're gonna find a seat where I can stare at the Statue of Liberty and drink two bottles of water. <laughs> and reflect on today, a very fun day, hanging out with you guys. Lots of historical markers down here, but I'll be honest, I just wanna go sit and drink some water now. <laughs> Over there, Castle Clinton, some of the earliest defenses of New York City. Again, if you were with us last night, or if you weren't, you can watch the replay. We uh, we came to a couple spots down here, including Francis Tavern, where a general named George Washington bid farewell to his officers. So last time we were here, we got a little bit of buffering. So of course I'm always nervous that's gonna happen again. But, uh, I'm going to say my thank yous now and then just give you guys a nice view of the Statue of Liberty and you can probably listen to me drinking gulping water in the background. <laughs> so, Marie de Ortrock, Bear in the Garden, AC, Rebecca, Helen, Eliel with the Super Chat, Marv with the Super Chat, Flowing Happy with the Super Chat. I apologize if I'm forgetting any else along the way, but very, 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 very grateful for the support. Everybody who watched Gregory Kelly, Prince Ice, our other mods, my beautiful wife, Lisa, for looking after the kiddo while I go wandering this fair city. Today was a fun one. I hope I've inspired at least one or two of you to maybe do this walk yourselves. It's so, so, so fun. You really do get to see the entire city in half a day. Or as I forget who said it, you could build a very nice itinerary, build, build in some bagel time, build in some cocktail time. <laughs> this has been a really fun one. And uh, when I get home, I'll put this together as one video and I'll add some chapters with the you know, the different neighborhoods and so forth, so you can revisit certain areas easily. This is a beautiful statue called the Immigrants. One of the kind of sad things is there's a plaque with Emma Lazarus's poem, but it's behind some security barricades. So it's, <laughs> you can't walk up and read it. <laughs> and of course now they're doing all this extra construction work so we're gonna hang a left over here get as close to the water as we can so I can show you the Statue of Liberty but there she is right now let me just go get a seat somewhere my dogs are barking Yeah, this has been a really fun one. Hope you guys have had a good time. If you join later on, you know, again, when I post the, uh, the replay video, 
hope you'll check it out because you know we really did get to see a lot of cool stuff along the way. Oh, they're really doing a lot of construction down here. Uh, okay, this is good enough. <laughs> this is definitely good enough okay let's put the camera down let me see if you still can see the statue at all oh, can you see it uh, sort of hold on oh they're gonna stand right in front of it Friends, I'm gonna drink some water. Oh, well, you guys look at the beautiful Statue of Liberty. my friends it's been real this has been a really awesome day big shout out to anybody who's hung around for most of this walk it's been just really 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 fun and it is of course even more fun having you guys along to chat with talk about the city talk about the history talk about some of the fun sites along the way Whew. All right, one and a half more bottles of water to go. <laughs> All right, my friends, I'm going to sign off here. So I'll post a replay later on. But in the meantime, again, shout out to everybody for hanging out. It's been so much fun. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I'll see you again real soon. Maybe after a day or two. I'm going to let my feet rest. But I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.